the 2023-24 regular season has come, and after this weekend, it'll be gone. It just will be one season, one game, one game tomorrow night, and everything is done. But see, to me, people around here are worked up a little bit about it. Just one point tonight or tomorrow night will seal the regular season championship and title for the Birmingham Bulls if that actually means anything to you. In fact, the only way Birmingham doesn't finish in first place is if we drop both games to Evansville and Peoria wins both against Quad City. Highly unlikely for it to happen, but as you know in sports, anything is possible. Full disclosure here, I really don't care if we come in first or second place as far as the Bulls are concerned in this regular season. I just care about the second season, the real season, the playoffs. All the work that the coaches and the players <clears throat> and the front office, the game night staff, and even Greg and I have put together thus far is just about one thing. It's about the playoffs, being successful in them in April. Having home ice advantage for the playoffs is the reward that you get for a successful season, and nobody at this point has been more successful than Birmingham in the regular season. But it's a reward for what happens in October through the first part of April. The real rewards happen after that. Playoff rosters must be set and submitted to the league office in Doug Price on Sunday. Most of the roster work for every team in the league, even the teams that didn't make the playoffs, most of that has already been done and it's set. Yet there are still changes and additions and subtractions being made daily. While we can add players through Sunday morning, the team we are putting on the ice tonight will more than likely, most likely be the team that we go to try and win a championship for the first time in Birmingham hockey history. The Bulls dating back to the World Hockey Association in the 1970s when I was in elementary school. The Central Hockey League after that. Then after that became the East Coast Hockey League in the 90s and now this version of the Bulls in the Southern Professional Hockey League. And from one person who's been there for every version of it, either as a fan or as an employee, I really would like to feel just once, just one time, once, what it's like to walk out of the arena knowing that the players that you've been pulling for and calling all year long are walking out with something meaningful, a trophy, a title that actually means they're the best. Hello again, everyone. Jody Chernesky here from Evansville, Indiana. <clears throat> and yes, my throat is still hoarse. I'm not quite sure what bug I got last week when we were in Birmingham, but uh, I am solo tonight. No Greg Drevity and no Pat Johnson. So I'm going to do the best I can. There's two ways I can go about calling this hockey game. One is if we were on TV, which doesn't take <clears throat> a lot of voice interaction. You don't have to be as descriptive. The other way, of course, is radio. And in that, you have to paint a mental picture as to what's happening for those who can't see. I'll do the best I can. If these guys can get out on the ice and actually play through injuries, I can play through a sore voice. How's that? All right, the lights are down. We're about set for the national anthem. The players are coming onto the ice. We'll be back in just a few minutes for our starting lineup. Jody Cherneski here from Evansville, Indiana, Birmingham Bulls at the Evansville Thunderbolts. Stay with us. All the action coming up. You're listening and watching Birmingham Bulls Hockey.
Cody Chernesky back at the Ford Center here in Evansville, Indiana. Starting line is being announced now as the teams are on the ice. We're about a minute to go before opening faceoff. Tonight, starting lineup first. I guess I'll go with the Birmingham Bulls since we are the, the visiting team tonight defensively. For Birmingham, it'll be Ryan Romeo. Ryan will be paired up defensively with Matt Clark, one of the newcomers for the Bulls up front. Scott Donahue, Zach Masson, and Nick Fia. For the homestanding Evansville Thunderbolts defensively, Adam Pol excuse me, that's Adam Pilot. I probably will call him Pilot or Pilot many times tonight, but his actual name is Pilot, Adam Pilot. Defensively, he'll be paired with Grayson Valent. Up front, Brendan Harrogate, Miles Abbott, and Matthew Hobbs. We'll pause real quick for the playing of our national anthem. Okay, children's choir tonight. I'm sure there's a little um, spring break going on. I wasn't exactly sure, but there's a nice group of about 20, 25 kids singing the national anthem. A slow arriving crowd here in Evansville for a Friday night. People still work just like they do in Birmingham. I made the mention of that last time we had a Friday night game. A good solid crowd came in, but not so much at the first. Um, this is about the same way, a late arriving crowd. Now, also tonight here in Evansville, there's a freeze warning in effect. Yes, and you all know how I feel about cold weather. I made it clear a couple of months ago what I would rather have a cigar done than to go through any kind of cold weather into the teens. It's gonna go down to the mid 20s here tonight in Evansville. I left Birmingham with 85 degrees. Holy cow, I wish it was that way again, but not so much. Also, the bane of my existence, if I'm king of the world one day, I'm going to immediately, my first course of action will be to outlaw country music and rap music. Tonight is country music night here in Evansville. Of all the times to pick to go on a road trip for the past five hours that I've been in the building, even with nobody here, they've been playing country music song after country music song. It reminds me of when I was a kid, my mom, playing AM country music radio. Oh, that's part of the reason I don't care for it. But at least we have hockey now. Face off will come at center ice. The referees for tonight's game, Mitchell Perry, linesman Adam Kiefer, Andy Zawaga, Cole CC in net for Evansville, Hayden Stewart, second leading goal to in the league for Birmingham. And we're underway. Off the draw, Valent will put it in deep behind Stewart. Backhanded along the near side, gets past Birmingham, but Fia intercepts and takes it, wraps one down into the zone. Donahue tries to cut in front of CC, couldn't do it easily, steered aside by Cole. And now the loose puck in the Evans zone, picked up Fia, spins his shot, goes wide. Evans will clear the zone. Abbott puts one into the far corner, Stewart out of his net, he'll play it. Backhands one near side for Romeo, who'll get it out to center ice. 
and Birmingham will have their first line change of the night. Back into the bull zone, Harrigut tried to get past Clark, couldn't do it. Wiesner picks the loose puck up for Birmingham and he'll drop it back. Birmingham will set the play. Just underway here in the first period, no score. One minute gone, play in the Evansville zone. Adams has it, Bronson Adams, that's a heck of a name for a defenseman, big tough name. Drops it back, Uskavich has it in his own zone. He sends it ahead for Spence and back comes Evansville loses the puck, Kola Tarski intercepts and dumps it right back in. Going in after it, Rose, along with Yuskevich, loose along that far corner. It's played behind the net by Yuskevich, Rose as well. Still loose. Nobody's coming away with it. Now Bronson Adams gives it up near side for Kurt and taken away by Kozarev. Kozarev in that near corner, sends it far side for Rose. Wraps it around behind the net for Kozarev. He's watched by Spence, so he'll take it out far side on the near half wall. Kozarev spins away from Spence. Down low, it's play for Rose. He backhanded it over, but no one was in the near corner, and it's escaped the zone as it's sent out by Curtin. Glover puts it right back in, and offside is the call on the Birmingham Bulls. Around the league tonight in other games, Pensacola is at Fayetteville. Knoxville is at Roanoke, and of course Birmingham here in Evansville. Macon is in Huntsville, and the game we're more concerned about, as is Evansville for that matter, is Peoria is playing at Quad City. One point's all Birmingham needs, either that coming from a form of a Fayette, or excuse me, Peoria loss or a Birmingham win. Now Puck is played in, right in on CeCe. That shot was taken from the far wall by Donahue, and CeCe just covers it up and holds on face off in that Evansville zone just to his right. 17.57 to go, first period, no score. Each goalie face one shot. Kind of a slow beginning to this one. Trying to feel each other out and see how it goes. Now they'll drop it again. Front one was moving prematurely on the draw, so face off again will happen. Nick Fee on the draw for Birmingham. Zhukov for Evansville. Loose at the bottom of the feet, skated away now, Spadafor, excuse me, that's Prestia. He tries to get it to Vazjonk and couldn't do it. It escapes back all the way into the bull zone where Briarly has it. Sends it near side, Matthews had it bounce off his stick, so he'll just float one into center ice and it gets all the way into the Evansville zone. Donahue just spins, takes the shot past Pilot, and CeCe just holds on as he made the stick save. Playoffs begin next week for the Birmingham Bulls and these Evansville Thunderbolts as well. Regardless of who the opponent is, it will either be the same Evansville Thunderbolts or Pensacola. It'll take place Wednesday night in Birmingham. Get your tickets now. This is going to be a fun series to open off with, especially if it's the same Evansville Thunderbolts. Off the draw, there's a shot by Miller. McTavish had a chance to deflect it, just couldn't get it, and the puck comes back into the Bulls' zone. Clark behind his own net, bounces one off the boards for Miller. Miller tried to set it up far side. McTavish is out of his reach. Prestia has it. Prestia loses it. Wiesner score! Prestia caught the puck up behind his own goal line. Wiesner was there, easily took that shot. Nice one, far right hand side. And Matt Wiesner gives the Bulls that important 1 0 early lead. For Wiesner, that's Matt's 10th of the year. He gets the double-digit goals. And that is an important goal. I still don't understand why, but first goals matter in this league a lot. We'll get into that in just a second. And wait for the call. Birmingham now up 1-0. Here's the call. This is the Walter. 2.45, the time of the goal. Wiesner on the goal, <clears throat> his 10th of the year. Walker on the assist. Now behind the net, Evansville has it. Slowly, Evansville starting this game and already caught it up again behind the net, taken away by Drake Glover. No one in front. He still holds on to the puck. Behind the net, it's tipped away from him, but it comes right to Zach Masson. 
Masson banks one for Kula Tarsi. Comes right to Masson. Backhander save made by CeCe. Rebound behind the net played by Glover, and he'll send it near side. Birmingham applying the pressure. Kula Tarsi tried to bank one off the boards, and it hits Yuskevich instead and comes to the near corner. Evansville tried to play it and out, but they couldn't. Kula Tarsi intercepts. Now it's loose in the slot, and Evansville will clear back into center ice. 16 minutes to go, first period, Birmingham up 1-0. As the puck is played in the bull zone, Carson Vance will skate away. Through center ice, Carson Vance gives it to McTavish. McTavish can't get past Valent. Now it's loose in the Evansville zone, played in the corner behind the net. Matt Dorsey will pick it up for Evansville. Banks went off the boards to Zhukov, who will put it into the bull zone. Matthews will come back and get it for the Birmingham Bulls. Matthews drops it off. Now McTavish sends it far side. Sinclair back to McTavish. Loose puck. Sinclair had Wiesner, but it is deflected away from him as Birmingham just could not get that one to convert. Now it's sent all the way down to the length of the ice, and icing is called on the Evansville Thunderbolts. Evansville has started this game off very slowly. Um, I mean, I really expected, to be honest with you, that for them to come out and play as did Macon in Birmingham last weekend, just throwing bodies all over the place, body checking, slamming people around, playing a big, tough, physical style of hockey. But we haven't seen it thus far. It's still early. But not right now. Birmingham taking the play to the homestanding Evansville Thunderbolts. Face off to the left of Cole Cece. Sinclair on the draw loses it. Picked up by Evansville, and they'll bank it out to center ice. Matthews hit from behind as the first big hit of the day by Jacob Camps. Now he's still on Matthews. He gets back to his feet, and the Bulls send the puck in the Evansville zone. Far boards, they'll try and clear. Now they'll send it near side. Camps has it. Camps hit on the play, loses the puck. Here's Carson Rose, takes a shot. Kind of deflected and goes wide. Now the loose puck along the far boards. Sinclair has it. Had it poked away from him, and the puck will come near side. Up against the board, Rose in front, looking for Kozarev. Knocked away from him, and Zhukov takes it for Evansville. A head manning pass ahead for Matt Hobbs. The former Bull takes the shot, goes high over the glove of Hayden Stewart. Now Spadafor takes the shot, easily sticks the sign by Stewart. Played behind the net, Matt Clark for Birmingham. Plays it against the board, he absorbs the hit. Kozarev will take the puck and skate it into the Evansville zone. Line change for the Bulls, so he'll just tip it in deep. 14-10 to go, first period. Birmingham one, Evansville nothing. Spadafor behind his own net. Watched by Nick Fia. Long pass through center ice, connects with Hobbs. Brings it into the Bulls zone. He'll wrap it around the boards. Now Clark takes his man Abbott down. No call, and the puck escapes the zone. Birmingham. We'll have a chance as Nick Fia, along with Spadafor, comes in. Fia goes down. Spadafor picks the loose puck up. Evans will try and clear. Puck tied up on that far board, and they'll finally get it out to center ice where Scotty Curtin has it. Curtin, near faceoff circle, cuts behind the net. Watched by Vance. Still holding on to the puck. He drops it down low. Now Spence had it taken away, but loose puck picked up by Evansville in front. There's Adams with a shot blocked nicely by Fia, and Birmingham skates away if we can hurry. Two on, not one, but instead Donahue just chips it in deep for a line change for the Bulls. Back through center ice, Matthews has it. He'll send it far side, return for Matthews. Long pass ahead just off the stick of Walker. Walker in the near corner spins away from Camp or excuse me, he sends it in deep, taken away by Yuskevich, who will get it up to Zhukov, and he'll skate ahead with it for Curtin. Zhukov there, watched by the Bulls, and an offside will be called as Zhukov kind of delayed his own self, bringing it into the zone. It was tipped away from him, and he preceded the puck. So with 12.45 to go here in the first period of play, we'll have our first media timeout. Jody Cherneski here from Evansville, Indiana, Birmingham with a one nothing lead over the homestanding Thunderbolts. Stay with us, folks. You're listening to Birmingham Bulls Hockey.
Okay, Jody Chernesky back here at the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana. As Hayden Stewart gets that last drink of water, he'll go back in his net, bulls up. one nothing. Still crowd arriving in a little later than normal. I see, a, to be honest with you, I see a few Bulls fans here in attendance as well. Matthews, after the faceoff, takes the puck. It's knocked away from him. Briarly will pick it up and send it behind the net minder of Cole Cece. Around the near boards, Matthews keeps it in for the Bulls. Sends one looking for a deflection, none forthcoming. Now loose puck along the far boards. Evansville has it, and they'll skate away. But they lose it as Pilot lost it off the end of his stick. Birmingham's Matthews sends it back through center ice. Loose there, Matt Hobbs plays it. Now Hatton picks the loose puck up, and they'll drop it onto the fence for Valent, and they'll set the play for Evansville. Ahead, just off the stick of Miles Abbott, back behind the goal line, played by Briarly, near side in the bull zone. Nick Fia has a dangerous pass right through the slot. Come on, Nick. Off the stick, save made, rebound, save again. Rebound sent in front. All oh, that started with a bad pass through the slot, and it almost resulted in a goal. Now in front, there's a backhand score. Donahue with the goal. He took the head manning pass at center ice, and Birmingham ever so fortunate after that bad pass by Nick Fia, somehow, Evansville could not convert. They had two good chances at it. One point blank range in front of the net. But just that quickly, seconds later, Birmingham converts as Donahue brings it all the way in, cuts across in front of the goal mouth with nobody contesting him. And he buries the puck to give the Bulls a two goal lead. Donahue picks up his 16th goal of the year. Birmingham, a big goal now leading by two. 8.18, the time of that goal. Romeo on the assist until we can hear better. We're way up in the rafters. Sinclair takes the shot, goes past the goaltender, Cece. Puck bounces all the way back into the bull zone. Harrigan has it. Can't get away from Clark. Good defensive play by Matt Clark. And Birmingham's Wiesner will skate away. Wiesner. Ahead for McTavish, who'll send it into the far corner. Played by Evansville, but not out. Harrogat has it. Still along there, and the board's in their own zone. Lifted into center ice. Now Scotty Curtin will backhand it one into the far corner. Played by Cola Tarsi. He can't get it out. Kept alive, cuts through the slot. Backhander save made by Stewart. As Matt Dorsey picked the loose puck up along the far half wall, cut just past the far face off circle into the slot, got a weak backhander off. Stewart easily makes that save and makes no mistake, he covers it and just holds on for a face off in his own zone. Face off will be to Hayden Stewart's right. Zhukov on the draw for Evansville opposite. Drake Glover for Birmingham. Puck drop, loose at their skates. Dorsey picks it up. He's knocked away from it by Cola Tarsi and the Bulls clear the zone. Just past Zhukov taken away by the Bulls, Drake Glover. He'll send it in leisurely into that far corner. Back to play to Juskiewicz for Evansville. He's hit on the play and goes down. A nice play there by Glover. Now it's loose at the slot. Or through, just past the blue line, Birmingham will pick it up. Now, whistle blows as play has stopped. You've got a player down at the other end. That's Dimitri Yuskevich for Evansville. He took a big hit on the play by Drake Glover. He's up and just doubled over, skating back to his bench. I just don't believe he was expecting the hit, first of all. And it probably got him in a good place. Yuskevich is going to go back to the locker room and have a look, see as maybe what happened there. We haven't seen a replay yet, but that hit by Glover just caught him by surprise. No penalties called on the play. 10.20 to go here in the first period. Birmingham up 2-0 over Evansville. Yuskevich is the son of former Philadelphia Flyer, Toronto Maple Leaf. Demetri Yuskevich, who was a rough, tough physical defenseman, 
in his NHL days, his son playing here in Evansville. Off the draw, Evansville sends it into the Bulls zone, picked up by Abbott. Miles Abbott behind the net for Hobbs. Hobbs leads it back at the point, Valent. He loses it as Carson Vance takes it away, and Birmingham clears the zone. Back into the Thunderbolt zone. Evans will try and just wrap it around the boards. They do, but it's taken away by Matthews, and he sends it ahead for Masson. Near faceoff circle, Masson in front. Donahue was there. He just couldn't find the puck, and back comes Evansville through center ice. Hatton loses the puck. A nice play by Briarly as well as Matthews to take the puck away, and it's sent back into the Evansville zone. Behind the net, Pilot has it. He sends a dangerous pass, but it's picked up by Evansville's uh, Scotty Curtin. He'll send it back into the bull zone for Harrogate. Harrogate drops it back a shot, goes into the netting and out of play as Grant Spence unleashed a slap shot as the puck found his stick, but it never made it through to Stewart. Goes out of play with 9.21 to go here in the first period of play. Birmingham 2, Evansville nothing. Stay with us. You're listening and watching Birmingham Bulls Hockey. Okay, Jody Chernesky here back at the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana. Birmingham jumping out on the Evansville Thunderbolts, leading 2 0 on goals. The last one at 8 10 of the first period off the stick of Donahue, the first one from Walker. Face off in the bull zone to the left of Hayden Stewart. One by Wiesner. Birmingham will clear. Walker. Skates away with the puck through center ice, and he'll dump it in past Battiford. Played by Evansville there, taken away by Tavish in front. Wiesner is shot blocked by the defense. Scotty Curtin keeps that puck away, and Birmingham has to get the puck and come back out of their own zone or out of the Evansville zone. Birmingham will change lines, back to get it. Spatterford ahead for Scotty Curtin. Along these near boards, Curtin will send it opposite boards. Played by Vance. He'll backhand one over, and here come the Bulls. Ryan Romeo, long pass up for Rose, just out of his reach. Comes all the way back in, and as Yuskevich, back from the locker room, getting checked out, touches up. Icing is called on the Birmingham Bulls. Out for Birmingham. Carson Vance defensively. He'll play out along with Ryan Romeo in this shift. Nikita Kozarev, Drake Glover, and Carson Rose. The money line, if you will, for the Birmingham Bulls. Jukov, Dorsey. So Jukov will take the draw for Evansville. He's out with Dorsey and Vazjankin, the former Bull. There's two former Bulls on this Evansville squad. Vazjankin along with Matt Hobbs. Now it's dropped. Evansville controls. Taken away, though, nicely by Kozarev. He'll try and get away from Adams. Drops it back for Rose. Rose couldn't get past Adams, so he'll put the brakes on near corner. Puck comes free. Evansville clears back through center ice, and Vance gives his players a chance to vacate the zone. He'll send it right back in. Through center ice, Vaz Jonkin plays it far boards. Briarly picks the puck up for Birmingham. Evansville just doesn't look like they're, uh, they've got their foot on the gas, to be honest with you. It looks like they're... The little 65-year-old lady driving through a parking lot as far as speed goes. They just don't seem to have it. Now, Evansville's Adams takes the or Camps, that is, takes the shot. Easily steered aside by Stewart. Loose puck picked up by the Bulls, and he'll comes Nick Fia through center ice for Masson, who'll dump it in. Giving chase. Donahue picks it up, gets there first, plays it around the boards. Donahue still with the puck. Now, Fia takes it away from Valant, walks in front, couldn't get the shot off. Loose puck picked up by Fia. He'll just try and walk out in front. Gets it to Masson. 
Save made by Cole CC, and they'll vacate the zone. Birmingham brings it right back in. Walker sends it behind the net. It's played by Valent. Far boards. Harrogate tips it for Hobbs, and here comes Evansville through center ice. Camps has it. Wiesner back defensively. There's a pass. Easy save they made by Romeo. He blocks the shot off of Harrogate's stick, and the Bulls clear. Sinclair now at center ice. Tips it away. Just couldn't chip clear, uh, break clear of Spadafor. And the puck is played by Evansville. Brings it back into the bull zone. Harrogate has it. Centers a pass in front. Spence is there. Score. <laughs> Birmingham could not clear the puck out of front of Hayden Stewart. It wasn't really a, <laughs> a nice play, so to speak, by Evansville. But they had one or two more bodies in front of Hayden Stewart. The Bulls could not get control of the puck to clear and it found its way onto the stick of Evansville, and Birmingham's lead is cut in half at 2-1, to 13-15 the time of that goal. I don't want to say that Evansville's slow play is, at least at that point, slowed Birmingham's reaction time, but Evansville has definitely came out slow, slow, slow brand of hockey. That time, Birmingham could not clear the zone and didn't really... Didn't really seem to put a lot of effort in it. We're back to action here. Two to one now, Bulls lead. Here's the call. Spence on the goal is second of the year. Two to one now, the score is Birmingham here in Evansville leading. Joey Colatarsi with the puck. Just past the red center ice stripe, sends it in. Played behind the net by Adams. Yuskevich is there. Behind the net, Yuskevich plays it near side. Bajonkin couldn't clear. Birmingham's shot goes wide, and Adams banks one off the boards back into the bull zone. Six minutes to go. First period, Birmingham two, Evansville one. Played just inside the Evansville blue line. Masson will send it in deep. Birmingham will give chase as Fia goes in after it. Valent picks it up first, sends it near side. Masson a good job to keep it alive for Birmingham. Matthews lost the puck, though. Look out. Hatton sends it far side for Hobbs. Penalty coming up on the Bulls. They score. No. He waves it off. That puck was in the net. Now some pushing and shoving in front of Stewart. Taylor Brierley looks to be the man for Birmingham, grabbing at least at this point a hold of one of the Evansville players. Now Hatton watches on for Evansville. Cooler heads will prevail, but that puck went in the net and back out. Hobbs breaks away. He was the one that was pushing and shoving with Taylor Briarly. Still have any word with him, but we're gonna get a penalty on the Bulls. It'll be the first power play of the night for either team. We'll wait for the call. Evansville's as a result of that goal that just, honest to goodness, it was, the puck was just laying in the goal mouth. When they scored the goal, it seems to have lit a fuse and now they're starting to play the type of hockey that I at least expected Evansville to play. A tough, rough brand, pushing, shoving, whatever you wanna call it, they're gonna let you know you're in a hockey game now. Whereas for the first 10 minutes of this game, it wasn't so much the way it was going. They're discussing the penalty now along with Scotty Curtin and Drake Glover, the captains of the teams. The referee, Mitchell Perry, still waiting for the players to come to the box. No one in yet. Now finally Birmingham will send a player into the box. And it looks to be McTab or excuse me, Matthews. Now the referee. Mitchell Perry appears to be watching a replay. He's inside the scorer's table. And he's either watching a replay with both linesmen or he's trying to get whatever call it might be squared away. Either way, Evans will be on a power play. This will be the first, as I said, for either team tonight. Evansville has the worst power play unit thus far in the league. They've scored 
21 power play goals. They've given up two shorthanded goals, only 12% success rate for the Evansville Thunderbolts on the year. Birmingham's penalty kill, fifth in the league, 81, 82% success rate. They've given up 31 power play goals, but we have scored two shorthanded goals. The problem is those two shorthanded goals for Birmingham are in Tulsa right now in the form of Keyshawn Gervais. Still, they're watching the replay right down below us. I can see them what appears to be watching a tablet of some sorts as the referee Perry takes his helmet off. I don't really know what they could be looking for unless, as I said, that puck originally went in the net, I thought. And they may be backtracking to see if, in fact, that should have been called a goal. And if it is, there will be no power play. That's the only explanation I can come up with. But while they're doing that, let's take a break. Give me a chance to get a little water here and see if I was right. Nonetheless, right now, Birmingham 2, Evansville 1, 536 to go here in the first period while we await the ruling on this goal or no goal. Jody Cherneski here, and you're listening to Birmingham Bulls Hockey. Okay, Jody Chernesky back at the Ford Center here in Evansville, Indiana. We're still waiting for the call, and I'm all for getting these play, these situations resolved accurately. And I, I'm no, I have no problem with the replay, but when you take as long as that has taken, they're going to call it a goal. Now an explanation being given to Drake Lever. I mean, full disclosure, I thought it was a goal to begin with, and I said so. I called it a goal. But then play was allowed to go on, which then resulted in a power play that will be negated now is the puck. They're showing it on replay now. Crossed that goal line, went into the net. I thought it was a goal all along, and it turns out I was right. I wish I wasn't, but I was right. And now, just as quickly as those two goals give Birmingham a two-goal lead, it's taken right back away, and now we're tied at two. Both players, or excuse me, two players went into the net of Hayden Stewart, Hayden Stewart being one of them, and the puck made it in across the line. That's the only explanation there is. As we await the call, Strange beginning of this hockey game. What started out looked like Evansville had no desire to play in this game. I mean, it resulted in two quick Birmingham goals in a 2-0 lead. All of a sudden, that's dissipated, and it's 2-2. At the end of this period, I'll try and get all the calls squared away, but it's not quite the same as communication lines in Birmingham. I usually get those immediately, goals and assists, but not so much here. All right, it's two to two. That's all I can tell you. No power play for either team. The Bulls had the puck in their own zone. That's Wiesner along the near boards. He'll give it up far side. Sinclair will skate it in to the Evansville zone. Takes the shot, blocker save made by CeCe. The whistle blows as both Wiesner now and one of the Evansville players having a few words. The whistle blew, I'm gonna assume, for offside. It's been a strange, strange, strange beginning to this hockey game. 
And with only 5.14 to go here in the first, sets up an interesting last five minutes, but more or less, I'd like to see real hockey being played like we've seen the last couple of weeks in Birmingham to begin the second period of play. Face off outside the Evansville zone. Drake Glover on the draw for Birmingham. Matt Hobbs for Evansville. Still waiting for, for that drop of the puck. Now the linesman will come across to the scores table. I don't know, he found something on the ice, I guess, but not here, I mean, we're still trying to communicate as Matt Hobbs comes over to talk to the referee. He'll go back far side. Now Hatton will take the draw for Evansville. Puck finally dropped, played just inside the blue line and Hatton has it. He'll just chip it back into the bull zone. Vance will give chase. Carson Vance can't get it out, centering pass in front just behind. The stick of Evansville and Birmingham clears. Carson Rose backhands one deep. Played there by Yuskevich, taken away by Rose. Still loose along that far side. It'll finally come back to the Bulls defense and Joey Kulatarsi has it. He'll send it just inside the blue line, intercepted. Adams takes it and sends it behind the net. Stewart will play it and leave it for Vance. Dorsey takes it away from him. He gets his elbow up on Zach Masson. Dorsey tried to break away, couldn't do it. Now he'll just play it behind the net. Joey Colatarsi goes in after it, along with Pilot. Zhukov comes away with a puck, though. He'll play it around the near boards. Valent and Colatarsi going after it. Valent takes it, centering pass right for Zhukov, loose in front of the mouth of the goal. Vazjankin goes down. He couldn't get the shot off. Now it's played behind the Bulls' goal line. Vazjankin and Colatarsi fighting for it, along with Masson. Comes free, Valent. Had it knocked away from him by Fia, who had his stick held. No call plot made. Pilot has it there. Vazjankin comes in as well. There's a shot taken from just inside the blue line, an unexpected one at that. Stewart saw it, though, and it holds on to it. We'll have a face-off deep into the bull zone. 3.49 to go here in the first period of play as we have a media timeout. Shots on goal at this point. Birmingham was six, Evansville was seven. I still haven't seen the replay of the goal that wasn't, that was, whatever you want to call it, the one I called a goal and they allowed play to go on. We haven't seen a replay of that as of yet, but either way, they took their time. They got the call right, I have to assume, and made the call, giving Evansville that equalizer at two to two. with 3.49 to go here in the first period of play. Okay, Stewart will go back in the net. Birmingham will have the faceoff in their own zone. Out for Birmingham, it looks like Briarly advanced defensively with Sinclair Wiesner. And McTavish for Birmingham. For Evansville defensively, Spadafor along with Nick Prestia, Grant Spence up front. He'll be out with Harrogate and Scotty Curtin. Spence on the draw opposite Sinclair. Puck is dropped, sent far side. Wiesner just lifts one into center ice and Birmingham clears the zone. Loose puck at center ice. Fan with Sinclair, he tried to get it in deep but he fanned on the shot and Evansville turns it into the bull zone. Loose along this near face-off circle, still loose. Curtin comes out with the puck, sends a shot, save made by Stewart, and Broles will clear. McTavish takes the pass from Wiesner, drops it back for Briarly, a shot is deflected by Harrogate into the netting and out of play. Now behind the net, Spadafor getting tied up with McTavish. McTavish, the leading penalty minute obtainer, if you will, for Birmingham. Not very many Bulls have a lot of penalty minutes. McTavish being the exception. He likes to play that rough style of hockey that you need so much for the playoffs. 64 penalty minutes on the year. The cooler heads will prevail. Nothing will come of this. Spadafor, on the other hand, 125 penalty minutes for Jordan Spadafor easily would top the penalty minutes for the Birmingham Bulls. 
Battifor had a, a bout, if you will, the last two times these plays got, wound up with a suspension for it the last time the Bulls and Evans will play it here in this building. Face off to the left of Cole Cece. Dropped, still losing that face off circle and Hobbs loses it, picked up by Kozarev. He's hit by Adams. Centering pass far side, there's a shot, skate save and a kick one by Cece. Now it's loose in that far face off circle and Evans will clear the length of the ice. Back to pick it up, Clark, no icing. No icing is caught on the play. Loose in the near corner. Centering pass, trying to get it to Hobbs, they couldn't do it, Birmingham intercepts. And that's Matt Clark with the puck. Bounces one off the boards through center ice and Rose tips it in, Birmingham will change lines. 2.40 to go here in the first period. Evansville tips it back in. Back to get it is Matt Clark for Romeo. He'll set it up for Fia. Fia tried to get away from Dorsey. Dorsey takes the puck away from Nick, and Evansville will retreat into their own zone and reset the play offensively. That's Jonkin. Backhands a pass for Dorsey, who will bring it in. Puts the brakes on, and he'll just send it in deep. Behind the net, Zhukov. Left it there, but the only person there for anyone was Romeo. He gives it to Zach Masson. Puck still in the bull zone, though. Romeo sends one out to center ice, and Pilot picks it up for Evansville in his own zone. We're down to two minutes to go here in this first period of play. Score tied at two. Carson Vance with the puck at center ice. He taps one off the boards. It'll get in deep. Wiesner will go in after it, but it's picked up by Evansville behind their own net. Pilot with the puck. Ahead for Curtin, it bounces off his stick and Curtin clears it. Harrigut tried to set it up for Spence. It was behind him though, or they were gone two on one. Now the puck is loose in front of the Bulls bench. Waiting for it to come clear. Wiesner along with Spence kicking at it. It does finally come free. And Walker, Sends it right back to where it was started to begin with, to Wiesner. In front of his own bench, Curtin finally takes it away, and Evansville has the puck as Prestia sends it into the Bulls' zone. Prestia goes down off the hit by Walker, and Birmingham clears. McTavish tips it into the Evansville zone, played behind the net. Prestia, far boards and out. Look out, that hit McTavish. That could have easily been too many men on the ice. Kozarev will bring it in to the Evansville zone. Cuts through the slot. Save made. He really couldn't get that patented shot off. Now Glover and Spadafore pushing and shoving right in front of Cole Cece. Kozarev has an American Hockey League level wrist shot, no doubt about it. He just didn't get all of that one on it. A fluttering shot was an easy save by Cole Cece. And he holds on to it for a faceoff. Now I mentioned brothers and, and family and such. Cole Cece, the goaltender for Evansville. Now we are going to have a penalty, and it looks like this is going to be on Birmingham. I don't know if it was for unsportsmanlike, yapping. I don't know, but Kozarev's not happy about it. He's going to the penalty box. I'm interested to see what this call is. Now he may be being escorted off the ice. Kozarev. Back out of the penalty box, I have no idea what the referee and lines were trying to do here, but I do know Nikita Kozarev was not happy about what happened and what was called. Now Kozarev skating back over to the Bulls bench. I have a feeling that this could be a 10 minute misconduct at least. I hope that's all it is. Kozarev is a player we need on this hockey team to win this game tonight. Now we're talking to both Matt Hobbs and Drake Glover for Birmingham, the referee giving his explanation. I have a feeling you're going to get a 2 and 10 here on Kozarev. Still no calling. Probably a two minute unsportsmanlike and then a 10 minute misconduct for unsportsmanlike. No explanation being given to the Bulls bench as well. The referee has not skated over. They're calling a five-minute major on Nikita Kozarev, five minutes showing on the board, and we have yet to see what, if anything, he did. We can't get the call of the penalty as far up in the air as we are here in this building in the Raptors, and there's no wiring to pipe into the PA system. So at this point, 
we just done a five-minute power play for Evansville until further explanation is concerned. That means they can score as many power play goals as they want. I still haven't heard a word he said. I did hear a game misconduct, though, Biden, on the key to Kozarev. I want full disclosure, and I want an explanation for that myself. But Nikita Kozarev, the leading score among rookies in the league is gone. Third leading score in the league. The number one leader in assists, Birmingham, will now have to do without one-third of that top scoring line of Glover Kozarev. Oh, my goodness. Behind the net, it's played. Spence has it far side. Two seconds, one. That'll do it for the period. And I want to know what the call was. We can't hear a thing as far in as we are up in the rafters of this building. It's a great building. It's a great building for watch a hockey game. I'm in a great position to see the hockey game. But nowhere are you able to pipe in to the calls that are made on the ice. You don't know what the exact call is. All you can see is there's penalty minutes on the board. We can't even hear when there's a penalty minute being called. So let's do this. Let me go next door where the off-ice officials are and try and figure this out. We'll take a break. After 20 minutes of play as Drake Glover goes off the ice after trying to get an explanation, I'm not quite sure he's happy about it either, but it's the way it is. Two to two, the score. At the end of one period of play, Birmingham, two quick goals to start the game, answered right back by Evansville, and now we've lost Nikita Kozarev for the game and maybe even more depending on what kind of misconduct that was. Either way, Jody Chernesky here at the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana. Give me a few minutes. I'll go get to the bottom of this, and one way or another, I'll have an explanation for you. Birmingham 2, Evansville 2 at the end of 1. You're listening to Birmingham Bulls Hockey.
Okay, Jody Chernesky back, <clears throat> excuse me, at the Ford Center here in Evansville, Indiana. And at this point, I have somewhat of an explanation and the way it was described to me is, it's subject to change. Simply meaning, I don't believe they know exactly what the deal is. I don't believe they know exactly as far as an off-ice official, from an off-ice official standpoint, what the call is. We do know this. Nikita Kozarev was given a penalty for butt ending, meaning butt ending with the, the, the butt end of his stick. I did not see it. Uh, my counterpart, Tommy, with Evansville the same way, he did not see it either. He was as surprised as we were and have no explanation as to why, when, or how it happened. All we know is it did happen. Kozarev argued vehemently about it, as did Drake Glover, but to no avail. Kozarev was escorted to the penalty box. Then, after he was put in the penalty box, with that five-minute major for butt ending, they decided that it would be a game misconduct, and he was sent off to the locker room immediately. All I can tell you right now is the referee in this case, this is the first time we've seen this official, too, by the way. I do not recall him ever officiating a game for Birmingham. Mitchell Perry made the call sent Nikita Kozarev away. Kozarev, by the way, on the year, Nikita Kozarev has all of 18 penalty minutes on the year. This is highly unlike anything that I know of from Nikita Kozarev. He was not happy about the call. I have not seen a replay, but I would love to. I'd love to know what happened that would precipitate a five-minute major for butt ending as well as a game misconduct. The problem I have now is this. There are letters of the law you must follow within the rule book, and certain misconduct, certain major penalties come with suspensions, automatic suspensions at that. There's no time remaining in this regular season to have anything more than a one-game suspension. If Kozarev is given a suspension, then we know at the very least it'll be for tomorrow night's game right back here against Evansville. But if it's more than one game, this will bleed over into the playoffs and we're without one of our best players, if not the best player, he's definitely part of the line with Rose Glover out there as well. That's one of the most lethal lines this league has ever seen. And if Kozura is not allowed to play on it due to suspension, then that creates a whole new set of problems for the Birmingham Bulls come playoff time. Either way, I'm still going to do some digging and try and find out what happened. I do not even know where their uh, hockey TV crew is up here, or else if I did, I would go straight to them and ask to see the replay. I'm going to try and find it. If you've got it at home and you're watching and you can rewind it through DVR or what have you, please sign on to our YouTube audio site and tell me exactly what you saw. I can't see anything where we are, and uh, I have just been told that there's no uh, wiring, there's no way we can pipe into the PA announcer, so whatever is called, we just have to go by the numbers that are on the board. We're not given any explanation or the kind of penalty that was called or anything for that nature for goals and assists as well. So I'll try and do the best I can. This is when I need Greg Dreveny and I need Pat Johnson here to be able to listen for these things. But right now, all I know is Nikita Kozarev is not on the Bulls bench and he won't be. 18 goals, 40 assists, plus 30 on the year for Kozarev. And all of a sudden, we're without him for at the very least the next two periods, if not more, into tomorrow night and the playoffs. But either way, we have about nine and a half minutes to go before the start of the second period. During those nine and a half minutes, I promise you I'm going to see if I can't do some sleuth work and find out what's going on. Jody Chernesky here from the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana, where the Birmingham Bulls and the Evansville Thunderbolts tied at two at the end of one period of play. Stay with us. Hopefully I'll have an explanation. You're listening and watching Birmingham Bulls Hockey.
Okay, Jody Chernesky back here at the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana. And I did get a chance to look at what happened. Several different views, several different angles, even an overhead angle. And as usual, you know where I stand, where as far as the refereeing and officiating in this league is concerned. The only way I can describe this to you as to what happened was Nikita Kozarev was stationary, standing still, just outside that face-off circle. When Jordan Spadafore, play was dead, Jordan Spadafore skated right beside him and bumped into him. In a split second, Nikita Kozarev turns his head to the right and moves his arm. Spadafore never even looked back. He never even gave it a second thought. It was as if a fly had landed on Spadafore and he went to the bench. In other words, Jordan Spadafore is the type player, if you do something to him, he's going to make you answer. If you give him the butt end of your stick into the gut, into the ribs, or you slash him, I promise you, Spadafore will make you pay. Spadafore didn't even give it a second thought. He continued on his path to the bench. The referee in this case, Mitchell Perry, was standing five foot from both of them right in front of where it happened, and he saw the frontal view of these two players. That said, not once did Jordan Spadafore even look back to see who that was that gave him a butt end of the stick. In this case, if you wanted to do anything, give him two minutes for unsportsmanlike or what have you. But to give Nikita Kozarev a five minute major for butting, if you will, of the stick into the gut of Spadafor making it sound and look as if he's been stabbed of some way in some short is ridiculous. Not only does he get the five minute power play that is for Evansville and Kozarev gets the five minute major, but now he's dealing with a game misconduct, which now, as I said earlier, may even spill into not only tomorrow, but after that as well into the playoffs. I don't even know where to begin in talking about the officials and the officiating. I'm gonna keep calm about this because look, people make mistakes, things happen. You have to make calls on the spur of the moment. But when that happens, five foot in front of you, go back and look at it. Please go back and look at it if you don't believe me. Jordan Spadafore is one tough SOB, if you know what I mean. If someone dares do that to him, gives him the butt end of the stick, I promise you, they're going to pay for it within an inch of their life. He never even looked back. He never bent his neck to see who that was. And that tells me what did and what did not happen. Five minute major for that is beyond anything that should be happening. If you want to give him two minutes, give him a power play to try and save trouble in the future, I get it. But you don't take out one of Birmingham's best players, if not the best player on the ice, because somebody skated by them and bumped into them. Wow. Okay, now I'm fired up. <clears throat> we'll see what happens the rest of the way. Birmingham, Evansville tied up at two as we get set for the second period of play. Evansville out shooting Birmingham 8-7. They are still on a power play, 4.07 to go in this major power play for Evansville. Five on four advantage unless something else is called. And the faceoff will get things started at center ice. Evansville controls back into their own zone, going in after his P-Lot. Rose on him. Gives it up for Scotty Curtin, and he'll skate through center ice. Drops it, though, back defensively for Spence. Carried into the Bulls zone. Hobbs was in ahead of the play. Put himself in offside, so a whistle blows, and a faceoff will come outside the Bulls' blue line. Usually when a play like that happens, and the referee knows he was in the wrong, he was air. Usually a makeup call will come in force or come in not too soon after that. Let's see if they give a penalty over the next couple of minutes to Evansville 
to quote unquote make up for what probably definitely was a bad call. Let's see what happens. Birmingham, Drake Glover takes the puck and ices it the length of the ice with 3.30 to go here in this major power play for Evansville. Score tied at two. Helot with the puck, drops it back for Harrogate. He sends one in off the blocker of Stewart, goes far side, played by Spence. Grant Spence drops it for Harrogate. Near side, Pilot has it. Pilot walks into that face-off circle, down low for Spence. Plays it back near side for Curtin. Scotty Curtin, watched by Wiesner. Still holding on to the puck in front, Hobbs. Tried a sneaky shot, but it never made it through to Stewart. Now the loose puck along the boards, picked up by Curtin. Curtin plays it for Spence. Down low, Hobbs had it knocked away from him, floats into the air. Controlled by Evansville, Scotty Curtin, far side, Pilot, a slap shot save, rebound bounce right out in front. Stewart had no idea where it was, off the funny hop, but Birmingham clears the length of the ice. Two and a half to go here in the major power play for Evansville as Pilot skates away. Head Manning pass up, bringing it in, Scotty Curtin gets away from Matthews, Curtin cuts behind the net, looks for a place to go, cuts through the slot. Holding on to the puck, he dropped it for Valent, lost it. Zach Masson picks it up. He can't get away from Valent, or he was gone. Now Masson and Valent tied up along that board in front of the Bulls bench, still fighting for control of the puck. 2.10 to go here in the power play. Puck underneath the Zach Masson, finally knocked free, and here comes Evansville's Abbott, tips it into the Bulls zone. Goes in after it himself, hit by Matthews. Behind the net, Vaz Jockin and Briarly fighting for the puck. It'll come free. Abbott has it. He'll cut through that faceoff circle down. Low, Vaz Jockin a shot. Save made by Stewart. And Bulls clear the zone. Now Carson Rose trying to forecheck the puck away from Valent. He can't do it. Valent takes the shot as he brought it in just inside the blue line. Whistles it high. Puck played down low. Zhukov tried to centering pass. Knocked away from him. And the Bulls clear. That's McTavish. Puts the brakes on at center ice, and he floats one into the far corner. We're down to a minute 20 to go here in this power play for Evansville. Score tied at two. Storsey loses the puck, and the Bulls' Matt Clark sends one the length of the ice. Not a big lot of sense of urgency here for Evansville, and Birmingham will take it. Three men back defensively as Matt Dorsey pumps one in deep, played by Stewart around the boards for Sinclair. Prestia keeps it alive. Far side for Scotty Curtin. We're down to 50 seconds to go on the power play. Nick Prestia with the puck. He'll skate down into that faceoff circle. Curl around. He can't get past Sinclair. And it's picked up by Ryan Romeo, who sends it the length of the ice. Now Yuskevich tries to get it up for Camps. Can't do it again. Ryan Romeo with a nice play. Sends it down the ice. We're down to 30 seconds to go on this power play for Evansville. Nick Prestia drops it far side. Ahead looking for Scotty Curtin and Hobbs gets past both of them. Now Zach Massey catches up with it first and rips one around the boards down the ice. We're down to 15 seconds to go on this power play. The major power play for Evansville. Puck taken away by McTavish and he'll turn it right back in. That's gonna do it. We're down to the last five seconds to go. As you skate it, skates away, tries to get past Rhodes. He gives it to Curtin. Birmingham's back at full and even strength. Scotty Curtin below that goal line. Tried to set it up for Spence. Knocked away from both as the puck is loose there along the boards. Matt Hobbs with a shot save. Made rebound by Spence. Goes through the crease. There's another shot deflected off of Cole Tarsi. Somehow Stewart was able to keep it out and the Bulls clear the ice. They're going to call an icing, although that puck was touched. Tipped, that is by one of the Evansville players, Birmingham, arguing on the play. Both coaches as well, arguing that that puck was tipped and touched, but it's not gonna help out. Birmingham will be forced to have an, a face off in their own zone off, off the icing call. Coach uh, Kevin Kerr is just beside himself right now about this. And quite honestly, I don't blame him. Things aren't going well tonight in the uh, zebra department for the Birmingham Bulls, if you follow me. Evansville out shooting Birmingham 12-8, score tied at two, face off in the Bulls zone. 
to the right of Hayden Stewart. Puck dropped. Birmingham has it. Vance tried to get it out. He couldn't do it. Kept in. There's a shot taken. Turned aside. Kolatarski rips one off the boards, and Birmingham clears. Now the loose puck at center ice. Picked up by Rose. One man back. Rose a shot. Whistles it high and wide. Just past the outstretched glove of CeCe. Now a shot from the point. Sticked aside by CeCe. Played behind the net. Zach Masson hustling to keep the play going. Back from Matthews off of his stick. Birmingham will just have to dump it in deep. Played by Fia. Centering pass. Barely saved. Rebound loose. No shot. No save made by Fia. He had an open net and missed. In front, Matthews with a shot. Now whistle blows as CeCe lost his helmet. Nick Fia had the puck just to the right of Cole CeCe and open that to shoot out. He hesitated to take the shot, and when he did, it was deflected in front of him, and it never made it through. But nonetheless, Birmingham starting to do some, some damage, at least the forechecking-wise, in the Evansville zone. We'll see if they can build on that. Killing off a five-minute major power play has to be able to build some sort of confidence gives you a little extra skate if you will in your step Birmingham after that kill a goal here after killing off a five minute major would go a long way 12 10 shots on goal in favor of Evansville 1444 to go here in the second period of play and we're tied at two we still don't have a uh, update <clears throat> of scoring summary I mean, I apologize for that. Back in Birmingham, we we paused for a second. I'll let Pat Johnson make the call, and, and Greg Grevin and I write it down. But the communication line here is a little a little off, so to speak. And we'll do the best I can at the end of this period. I'll go down and get a scoring summary. I do know that the score is tied at two, and that's really all that matters at this point. Face off in the Evansville zone to the left, the goaltender Cole Ceci. McGregor Sinclair will be on the draw for Birmingham. He's out with Wiesner and Walker defensively. Ryan Romeo and Matt Clark. Evansville taking their own time trying to figure out the lineup. They do get a, a chance for the last draw, but they're just, they keep sending player after player after player. They're trying the matchup game. Coach Kerr and Coach Simchuk has just about had it. I mean, here comes two more players for Evansville. Now they'll send another one off. You cannot. What are you doing? They get the last call as far as matching up lines, but at least six different players were sent on the ice then to try and get the matchup that Evansville was searching for. Craig Simchuk has his hands, his face in his hands, trying to figure out what is going on. I've never seen anything like that. Face off to the left the Cole Cece. McGregor Sinclair on the draw for Birmingham. Zhukov for Evansville. Maybe we can get started now. Zhukov is tossed, but Ian Van Jonkin will come in his place. Wow. Off the draw, Birmingham controls. Romeo. Down low for Wiesner, centering pass. Walker couldn't get the shot off. Loose puck picked up by Zhukov, and he clears. I know it's tough to find officials at any level, but my goodness. Clark skates away with the puck for Birmingham. Ahead for Sinclair, who will put it in deep behind the net. Played near side. Walker is there. He's hit by Hobbs. Now Wiesner comes in to try and dig it free. Puck tied up along the near half wall here in the corner. Bounces free, and it's picked up by Spadafort, and he'll skate away from the other side. Can't get it out. Birmingham, a good job to keep it in. Wiesner was hit by Spadafort, though. Now Wiesner comes in and gives him a shove as well. Now another player, that's Hobbs, grabs a hold of Matt Wiesner, and here we go. Everybody's partnering off. Matt Hobbs, along with McTavish, Dancing away through center ice, just do -si do twirl and twirl. Here we go, still twirling and twirling. It's like a country line music dance here at Country Music Night in Evansville. Now one glove finally drops. McTavish and Hobbs go down. Still no punches. It's just a, a dancing and wrestling match, so to speak. Now Romeo takes the hit from Hatton. 
Romeo grabs a hold of Haddon. Now Hobbs goes down behind the play. Abbott and Wiesner pushing and shoving. Glover holding on to Wiesner, trying to make sure nothing happens that could hurt, I guess, Wiesner. They're still tied up, and I'll promise you this is happening because someone on the ice is, lo is losing or in the process of losing control of this game. You got Ryan Romeo and Hatton over here, nobody around them at center ice now pushing and shoving, grabbing a hold of each other. Now a linesman comes over. This is all the result, people, of the referee not gaining control of this hockey game and players that have had enough and decide to take matters into their own hands. And quite frankly, I don't blame them. Wow, into the box for Birmingham. Matt Wiesner along with McTavish. Looks like Spadafore brings Matt Hobbs' equipment over. Two bulls in the penalty box, one for Evansville. So let's try and do the math here. As we watch the replay, McTavish and Hobbs just really dancing until finally Hobbs or excuse me, McTavish went down, Hobbs on top of him. Then Romeo came in, he took a shove, a, an elbow, a forearm, so to speak, right to his head. And finally, Hatton comes into the box for Evansville. So Hatton and Hobbs in the box for the Thunderbolts, McTavish and Wiesner for Birmingham. All of this could have been avoided had the proper calls been made at the proper time. That's all I can tell you. And anybody that knows hockey will tell you that once you lose control of a hockey game, once the referee is not in control, once the players have had enough and decide if you're not going to make this, if you're not going to stop this, I will, that's when trouble starts. And the last thing I want to see right before the playoffs is somebody on the Birmingham Bulls to lose their cool and wind up losing a game or two in the playoffs because of it. There's one penalty showing on the board for Evansville on Hobbs. I'm not sure what it's for. It's just a two-minute minor. We'll wait and maybe they'll give us the call. I'll try my best to listen in. But unless something else is called, it looks like Birmingham will be on their first power play of the night. Evansville's had one, and it was a five-minute major. On top of that, they could not convert. Face-off will be in the Evansville zone to the right of goaltender Cole Cece. And it looks like Donahue, Masson, <coughs> Fia, Vance, and Walker are out for Birmingham on this power play unit. Zhukov will be on the draw for Evansville. He's out with Scotty Curtin, Yuskevich. Here's the call. Let's see if we can hear it. <laughs> Puck was there. Masson could not get control of it. It's sent away along the near boards. Puck snipped far side. Walker giving chase. Catches up with it first. I gave up on trying to hear the call. It's impossible to hear. Nick Fia drops it back in his own zone. And Birmingham's Fia has it there. Donahue with him. He'll give it to Donahue. Gets past Curtin. Donahue puts the brakes on in the corner. Drops it back at the point for Vance. A minute 20 to go in the power play for the Bulls. Shot taken. Hit in front. Yuskevich knocked the shot down. Now the puck is played along the far boards. Loose in that faceoff circle. Birmingham comes out with it. Behind the net. Donahue plays it for Walker. Far boards. Back at the point for Vance. Drops it for Walker return. Carson Vance takes a shot, deflected wide, and Zhukov clears. All the way back down in the bull zone, Vance will pick it up. Behind the play, Vance gives it up near side for Glover. Fia will go off. Birmingham taking their own time, setting this power play. Come on, guys, 40 seconds remaining on it. Sinclair with the puck, drops it back for Vance. He gains that center ice strike, dumps it in deep. Briarly's there, picks it up for the Bulls. Tried to play it behind the net, he couldn't do it, knocked away. Birmingham has it, they, Evansville couldn't clear. Now Rose, he takes the shot, deflected away by Abbott. Look out, here comes Abbott, 2-1 if they hurry with Dorsey. 
But back to top that is Ryan Romeo. Played behind the net now. Briarly takes Dorsey down. Drake Glover with the puck. Far boards in his own zone. We're down to the last 10 seconds of this power play for the Bulls. Rose brings it into the Evansville zone. Drops it for Glover, for Briarly. Near side, Romeo. Penalty about up. Romeo lays it down low. Tried to set it up for Rose, couldn't do it. Camps is back on the ice, and Evansville has killed the penalty in their back at full and even strength. Birmingham with the puck in their own zone. Romeo there. Big hit far side, though, delivered on Briarly. Puck comes in behind the net. Valent picks it up. He avoids the hit, but goes down. Plays behind the net. Donahue has it. Donahue circles right through the slot. Couldn't get the shot off, and the puck bounces off his stick. Donahue will play it back at the point. There's a shot knocked down by Valent. Masson picks it up for Birmingham. Behind the net is played near side for Fia. Fia circles. Just inside that blue line, he'll have to come out and reset the play for Birmingham. He had nowhere to go. Nick Fia tries to get away from Brendan Harrogate. Fia brings it right back into the Evansville zone. Sends one behind the net, no one there. But Evansville, now Clark intercepts their clearing pass. Behind the net, Carson Rose has it. He's hit by Pilot. Played back at the blue line. Glover, a good job to keep it in. Bounces off the glass behind the net. Rose couldn't get the shot off. Now in front. Score! Rose played the puck off the net. It bounced right to him, and it went to McGregor Sinclair, who, I'm sorry, it's not Sinclair. It's Walker on the play. Right there, Johnny, on the spot. He got a whack at it. The puck actually hit the heel of his stick and bounced into the top right-hand corner. Hard work. Hard work and effort on the part of Rose pays off, and Birmingham finally gets that lead back at 3-2 at 9-11 of the second period of play. Big goal for Birmingham. Everything you can think of went wrong for Birmingham, beginning with the Nikita Kozarev fiasco. And now hard work, digging the puck in, Digging it out of the corner, centering the pass, crashing the net. Right there was Walker who gets the goal. Walker's fourth goal of the season. Big play by Birmingham. 3-2 Bulls lead. Here's the call. Well, I give up. Rose on the assist for sure. Back, back in action, played into the Evansville zone. Prestia has it for Evansville. He clears it out to center ice. Colatarsi right back to put it in. Played behind the net. Spadafore off the boards. He can't get it out. Intercepted. Colatarsi keeps it alive. Now McGregor Sinclair takes the hit from Spadafore. And that puck bounces into the netting and out of play. So a faceoff will come up in the Evansville zone with the Bulls up. Three to two. Shots on goal. Evansville 12, Birmingham 11. Not real good for the goals against average or the save percentage, that is. But at this point, you just need one point, Birmingham. And then tomorrow night, it would be a useless game if either Peoria wins tonight or, Bur or excuse me, Peoria loses tonight or Birmingham wins. Tomorrow night's game is meaningless. You rest your starters. Because it doesn't do any good to get two points tomorrow night. The season has been determined. Face off in. The Evansville zone controlled by the Thunderbolts, Yuskevich. He backhands one off the boards, Kolatarsi ties his man up and is able to keep the puck in the zone. Nice play by Kolatarsi. Now Rose takes the hit there from Hatton. And the puck is played by Vance. Tried to stretch it at the Glover out of his reach. Behind the net, Yuskevich has it. Rose takes it away. He takes the shot, it flutters over the net. And played back through center ice, back into the bull zone as Carson Vance gives chase, touches up, and icing is called on the Thunderbolts. We'll take a break. 9.51 remaining here in the second period of play. Birmingham 3, Evansville 2. You're listening to Birmingham Bulls Hockey.
Okay, Jody Chernesky back at the Ford Center here in Evansville, Birmingham three, Evansville two. I want again apologize for the condition of my throat. I've been fighting this thing for a week. At first I thought it was pollen, but I guess it's not. There's definitely no pollen floating around the air up here. It's too cold. But I can battle through this just for a win here. Three, two, bulls up. Face off in the Evansville zone. They'll drop it again. There's, there's a little premature movement going on. Nick Field will be on the draw for Birmingham. Matt Hobbs for Evansville. Still moving. Zach Masson was told to head back. Finally, the puck is dropped. Bulls control easily. Matthews with a shot. Never made it through it. Hit Hobbs in front. Masson with the rebound. Still losing the crease. Covered up by Cole Cece, and he holds on. And here we go once again. Now Bronson Adams and Donahue squared off right here in this near faceoff circle. Hobbs on the other side. Now here they go. They drop the gloves. Bronson Adams and Donahue. There's a big right by Adams. Donahue holding on an overcut. Now an uppercut connects with Adams. Bronson Adams and Donahue really missing. <laughs> They're trying, but they're just not connecting. A lot of overcut, a lot of punches over the top, and both go down. The effort was there. The connection was not. If you're looking for accuracy in punches, you weren't going to get it there. But what you did see is kind of you saying, I've had enough. Let's go. Now, Bronson Adams, with a little message for him as he skates by, throwing his arms in the air. Maybe he's just fired up because he got a fight. I don't know. But Bronson Adams goes back to the locker room. Donahue escorted to the penalty box. All that coming with 9.43 remaining here in the second period of play. This is what I was talking about with Evansville. Their, their roster is full of players that can do this. Their roster is full of players that can hit you cleanly and punish you. But for whatever reason tonight, it's just been an odd game to begin with with Nikita Kozarev of all people being thrown out of the game one fight here and that really wasn't even that big of a fight I don't know These, this is the team I don't want to play in the playoffs but as it goes right now I would be okay with it the way it's being played all right off the draw taken by Brendan Harrigan and he'll slide it back into the bull zone picked up by Briarly, and he'll kick it right back out Pilot with the puck. Adam Pilot, the center ice for Harrogate, gets past him all the way back behind Hayden Stewart. And as Birmingham's Briarly touches up, icing is called on Evansville. Three two Bulls lead. 9.26 to go here in the second. Faced off to the left of Cole Cece. And it is full-fledged country music night here, and wow, I don't understand <laughs> that whole genre of music. If you could see some of the scenery here, I guess it would make sense, but this music is just awful. Off the draw, controlled by the Bulls. Matthews and Rister, kick save made by CeCe. Matthews did a good job, waited for traffic to develop in front, and then fired it in. Puck played off the boards near side, lifted into center ice where Briarly has it for Birmingham. Ahead for Wiesner. Wiesner tips it into the Evansville zone. It's played there. Nice hit on the play by Sinclair. It took Pilot, Pilot, that is, out of the play. Loose puck comes right to Cole Cece, though, and he covers up. Pilot is not happy about being hit there by. Now, Pilot is giving. McTavish, a little two-handed tap, love tap, if you will, and skates away. Birmingham is not backing down. They're starting to stand up, just as we did against Macon, and it's paying off. 3-2 Bulls lead. Glover on the draw for Birmingham. Zhukov for Evansville in the Thunderbolt zone. Loose puck picked up by Dorsey, and back comes Vazjanka. Ahead for Dorsey. Nice play by Romeo. Knocks the puck away. Loose at center ice. Birmingham has it. Glover tips it for Rose. A shot. That one just goes past the glove of CeCe. And Yuskevich tries to clear. Can't, but it comes right to Spatter for who does. Now Carson Rose backhands one deep. Birmingham will come off for a line change. 
as Jonkin plays it behind his net. Spatterford banks one off the board as he can't clear it at least past that center ice stripe. Birmingham puts it right back in. Uskavich ahead looking for Dorsey off his stick. Masson picks the loose puck up for Birmingham in his own zone. Tries to get it to Fia. It bounces away from Nick. Played back behind the net. Zach Masson has it. Goes into the netting. It bounced off of Masson's stick on some sort of rut on the ice and just popped straight up in the air into the back of the net. So we'll have a face-off into the Bulls zone with 8.03 now remaining here in the second period of play. And the Bulls leading by a score of 3-2. to two. Soft will be to the left of Hayden Stewart. We'll try and get some scores from out of town in just a moment. It doesn't really matter, though. I, I really even hesitate to look at the scoreboard. The only thing that matters is what Birmingham's doing on the ice tonight. We don't need anybody's help. We can do this ourselves. Now there's a shot by Hatton. Save is made. Stewart didn't really know where the puck was. It hit him and it keeps itself out of the net. Now Hatton turns one down low. There's Hobbs, a shot blocked by Kola Tarsi, who felt that. He's shaking his arm. That's a nice play by Kola Tarsi, but that one hurt. Kola Tarsi checking his own left arm out. I don't know if it got him on the arm or the wrist, but that one had to hurt. Joey will stay on the ice, so I guess everything is okay. You know, in a game like this, you know you just need one point. The last thing you want is for either A, an injury, or B, a suspension. And, wow, it's almost like we've had both of those tonight. Off the draw, Prestia has it. Prestia cuts back along the near half wall. Couldn't feed it back to Hatton. Prestia holds on to the puck, though, in the bull zone. Still fighting for it. Now Hobbs comes in and picks it up. Matthew Hobbs plays it behind the net. Cola Tarsi with a nice play, draws, ties his man up. Hobbs will come in and dig it free for Hatton. Near boards, Hatton behind his net, watched by Fia. He'll play it far side for Valent. Hatton lost it. Hobbs picks the loose puck up for Evansville. Behind the Bulls net, puck comes free. Look out. Fia walked right out in front, but finally gets the puck away for Wiesner along this near side. Wiesner hit from behind by Hobbs now. Vance goes down as well. Puck played by Wiesner and back into the Evansville zone. There's a lot of hitting from behind going on right now. That's three hits from behind I've seen from Evansville in the last shift. Scotty Curtin skates away with the puck. He'll give it for Hatton. And Hatton sends it into the far corner. Evansville will change lines. Played behind the net, Taylor Briarley has it taken away from him by Spence, but gets possession of the puck. Sends it ahead for Carson Rose. One man back, that's Spatafort. Rose puts the brakes on, sends one in front. Briarley was cruising, but it was covered up by CeCe. And he puts the big mitt on it and holds on for a faceoff. Not a lot of room out there for Birmingham to skate as we normally and usually do. But on that play, the ice opened up somewhat, and Briarley took advantage of it. He just couldn't get a stick on the puck and taking that feed from Carson Rose. Glover, Rose, and McTavish, who's taking the place of Kozarev, who was kicked out of the game with a the misconduct. There's a shot by Clark, deflected in front, save made by CeCe, and the puck goes far boards, kept the line by Birmingham. Behind the net, Spatifor plays it far side. In front, finds Rose, a shot save made by CeCe. That puck just found Carson Rose. He couldn't beat Cole CeCe. Puck just inside the Evansville blue line, tipped away by Scotty Curtin back into the Bulls zone. We're under six minutes to go here in the second period of play. Bulls up by one. McTavish for Wiesner, a shot. He beat CeCe, but it didn't get inside the post. Went right through the crease. Far side, Ryan Romeo whips it around the boards for Fia. Fia had Wiesner in front, but couldn't get him the puck. Now Nick Fia with the puck. Centers one for Vance. His stick was lifted on a good defensive play there by Spad or Harrogate. Now it's loose in the slot. Save made, rebound loose. Wiesner couldn't get it. His stick on the puck. Now it's in front. Fia with a shot. Blocked by the defense of Spadafort. 
Now penalty will be coming up. Loose puck in the corner. Now here we go. <clears throat> Joey Colatarsi jumps in. All five players for each team that are skaters are on the ice in the corner. An original penalty was coming up for Evansville. I don't know if this is going to negate that or not. Colatarsi came in hard after somebody, Masson, was already there trying to make sure. Now, Masson still has a hold of Spata for They'll finally let go of each other. Wiesner gives him a shot for good measure as they get up. Now, Evansville, Jacob Camps is escorted to the penalty box. He goes right in. Bronson Adams was already there. A third player for Evansville, Spadafore, comes in. That's his second home, Jordan Spadafore. I've met him. He's a nice guy. But he's not. He's very familiar with the penalty box. Trust me. We'll wait to see what the call is. But Spadafore, Camps, and Adams are in the box for Evansville. Donahue for Birmingham so far. There'll probably be one more Bulls player sent to the penalty box. But the referee at this point trying to give an explanation is Mitchell Perry, the referee discussing with Drake Glover and Matt Hobbs. Looks like he signaled for a cross check on somebody. He's still discussing it with the linesman. Maybe just to see what the linesman saw. I'm all for getting it right and consulting with your linesman. But let's just be consistent about it. You're going to give Nikita Kozarev a, a game misconduct for what I saw. You just about have to give somebody a game misconduct for skating to the bench and bumping into somebody because that's what happened. Spadifer's escorted out of the penalty box. Looks like he's going to be sent to the locker room. And I'm going to try my best to listen for this call because I definitely want an explanation. But Jordan Spadafore goes to the locker room with 5.13 remaining here in this second period of play. Bulls up by one. Mitchell Perry explaining things as best he can to both Hobbs and Glover. Along with linesman Adam Kiefer. Now Kiefer will go to the Bulls bench to try and explain to Coach Greg Simchuk and Kevin Kerr what's happening. And at this point, I'm completely lost. Now, Birmingham looks like Nick Fia is going to be escorted to the penalty box. As he comes in, he's either, he may be serving the penalty for someone else. Because I really didn't see what Fia would have done that would, that would constitute him being sent to the box. But all five players are over there congregating in that corner doing whatever players do in the corner after a whistle blows so anything's possible he probably did whatever he's been sent there for but once again we're delayed either from looking at a replay or discussing things with linesmen to try and figure out what was going on we just need to get the game going make your call get it right but make your call and let's go now Glover will go back to the bench along with Hobbs to explain it to the respective coaching staffs. And we'll try our best to get the call when they make it. That's all I can say. Once again, I apologize for the condition of my throat. Got one more game to go tomorrow night before the playoffs start and I'll, I'll go straight back to the ENT and try and get something done before that happens Wednesday night back in Birmingham. Still no call. And it looks like five skaters for Birmingham and four for Evansville. I see a seven minute penalty on the board for Evansville. Seven minutes on Jordan Spadafore. Now they're having to explain that to the coaching staff of Evansville. Yeah, I'd want to know the explanation as well. Oh, boy. 
Communication. Please start communicating better. This makes me really appreciate the off-ice officials and the communication or the line of communications we have in Birmingham because we would have already been back to action. I would have had an explanation, the call, the time, the combatants. It's just not the same way around the league everywhere. It should be uniform, but it's not. Now the referee is discussing with Craig Simchuk as he bring, as he got his lineup card out. Craig Simchuk, that is. So I don't know if that means the bull has been kicked out as well. But I do know this. We've been waiting for at least five minutes to get this explained, called, and going. And all we've done so far is put seven minutes of penalties on the board for Jordan Spadafore. And no explanation for the crowd, for the media, or for us for that matter. Okay, still no word, but we're at five on four hockey. And as soon as I find something out, I'll pass it along. But right now, Birmingham's on a power play. <laughs> And they say hallelujah, the music starts playing because we're back to playing hockey. That's funny. Birmingham with possession of the puck in their own zone. Ryan Romeo will set the play behind his net. Here's the call. Fayette, two minutes roughing, 10-minute misconduct. I don't know. Two minutes for slashing for Spadafore, and that's all I heard. Now the loose puck picked up by Briarly. Far boards. Far side off the stick of Glover picked up by Yuskevich, and he'll wrap one out and down the ice. What a weird hockey game this has been. What a weird hockey game. Seven minutes and penalties on the board with no explanation and it makes me look like I'm the ignorant one. I'm sorry, I just do not know what the call was because it wasn't made. Ryan Romeo with the puck. Drops it back defensively for Briarly. Briarly moves around one man, brings it in. Goes down, so he'll wrap one around the boards behind the net, played by McGregor Sinclair. Now, Scotty Curtin tries to take it away. He gets his stick up on, that's Walker, who's still holding his face. The stick got up, and no call was made. You're responsible for that stick no matter what. I'm telling you, there's going to be a war before this is over with. Now it's brought into the Evansville zone. The shot save made by CC Kicks the puck out to the near boards. Walker keeps it alive for Birmingham. Gives it for Sinclair. Back at the blue line for Carson Vance. Far side, Wiesner has it. Maddie with the puck near side, Walker. Back from Vance, he takes the shot. Easy pad save made by CeCe. Behind the net, Masson has it. Centers it back for Wiesner. Return for Masson. Now back at the point. Slot save score! Carson Vance took the shot. It was deflected in front. The loose puck found its way to the stick of McGregor Sinclair, who buries it top left shelf over the left arm of Cole CeCe in Birmingham. On the power play, regains that two-goal lead at four to two. McGregor Sinclair on the goal, his 13th of the year. And since it was a major penalty on Spadafore, showing a 454 remaining in that penalty, Birmingham still on the power play. Three oh seven to go here in the second period. Birmingham four, Evansville two. Puck drop and sent in right in on Hayden Stewart. He gloves it, drops it, and he'll play it for his defense. Here comes Ryan Romeo through center ice. Drops it back near side. Rose will bring it in to the Evansville zone. Far side Glover. Drake Glover far boards back at the point for Briarly to get past him, and Birmingham essentially clears the puck themselves down the ice. Taylor Briarly tries to get away from the four-checking of Abbott. He does, and he'll drop it 
And here comes Ryan Romeo through center ice. Romeo ahead for McTavish. He wasn't expecting it, so he gets past it. Behind the net is played, but not out. Hobbs lost it to McTavish. Far bore as Hatton comes in to try and dig it free. Still loose underneath McTavish. Now Glover comes in, gets it back near side. That's Carson Rhodes. Banks one off the boards behind the net, and the loose puck is picked up by Evansville, and they'll clear down the length of the ice. Stewart plays it, leaves it for Carson Vance. Vance ahead for Sinclair. Sinclair sends one out through the crease. Wiesner has it far face off circle. Back for Vance at the blue line. Near side, Sinclair takes the shot, save, rebound, loose. Donahue has it behind the net. He banks one off the boards for Wiesner. Near side, Sinclair thought about it, tried to feed Wiesner, tipped away from him, though, and it's played behind the net by Donahue. For Wiesner, near side, Birmingham keeps it alive. Sinclair back for Vance, a shot, save, made by Cole Cece, and he'll hold on for a faceoff. Birmingham applying the pressure, and they should. They've had seven minutes, or they're in the midst of a seven-minute power play, of which 3.09 are remaining in that major penalty to Jordan Spadafore, and Birmingham with a two-goal lead up 4-2. We'll take our last break of the period. 1.22 to go here in the second period of play. Birmingham 4 Evansville, too. You're listening and watching Birmingham Bulls Hockey. Center Clint Scherf has sent me a message <laughs> saying he's getting word faster the goals than we are here at the Civic Center. So yes, Clint, I would be more than happy for you to help me. The line of communication here is non-existent. To the zone in center ice, Evans will Zhukov plays it in. He's hit by Sinclair. Puck dropped back where Yuskevich has it, and they'll just try and skate some time off the clock. Pucks in and on Stewart, steered aside for Wiesner. A minute to go here in the second period of play. Bulls up by two. Carson Vance with the puck. He'll wrap one around the boards deep. Goes all the way to the far side where Wiesner has it. Centers a pass for Rose, a shot. Deflected defensively by Yuskevich. Puck comes back to Rose for Vance. Far side, Bulls. Back to Vance. Now Rose has it. 40 seconds to go. Rose drops it down low. There's Donahue with a shot blocked by Scotty Curtin, and the puck bounces back to center ice. Rose retrieves it for Birmingham, gives it to McTavish. Return pass for Rose, cross ice for Glover. Now Carson Rose gives it to McTavish, near face off circle. Banks one off the board for Rose. Cross ice pass, Briarley has it, takes the shot, three man loose score! Briarly with the shot on that far face off circle. He waited for the traffic in front, paid off. The shot was taken that was blocked in front. A save was made, but the rebound was right there with an open net. And I believe it was McTavish who will get the goal for Birmingham. Nonetheless, Birmingham with a three goal second period now lead by a score of five to two. Still on the power play. Jordan Spadafore, seven minutes in penalties, including a five-minute major for what we don't know because we don't have any communication up here to tell us who and what and when and where and why. We just know that there's still another 11 seconds to go in this period, and Birmingham is now up by a score of 5-2. to two. And now for some reason they've taken... 
the remaining part of Spadafer's penalty off the board. Okay, I give up. Whatever you guys want to do, just let me know what the score is. How about that? Romeo with the puck. We're down to under 10 seconds to go. Played by Briarly. Returns it for Ryan. Romeo with three seconds, two. That'll do it here at the second period of play. Mercifully ending it. This has not been a very good hockey game, folks. That's the only way I can put it. And it's due to a lot of reasons. <laughs> I mean, starting off with a Nikita Kozarev butt-ending penalty when he didn't do anything. Yet he gets a game misconduct and a five-minute major for it, and it's just snowballed from there. This is what happens when you lose control of a hockey game from the aspect of the officiating concern. I'm not saying the officiating is good. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying they've lost control of this game to the point where now you're just about making calls on top of calls on top of calls because that's what you did earlier on. Either way, though, we've got 20 minutes of this to go. I have no clue what's going to happen in the final 20 minutes of this game. I just know nothing that I expected to happen in this hockey game is happening tonight. I fully expected Evansville to come out, as did Macon and Birmingham, and just start throwing their weight around because they're capable of doing it easily and taking control of the game in so doing. But it hasn't worked out that way tonight. Birmingham at the end of two periods of play, leading the homestanding Evansville Thunderbolts 5-2. to two. And this is a very, very, very quiet crowd. There's not a lot of excitement in the air because it's just not a very good hockey game to watch. We'll take it because it's a win as long as we keep doing the things we're doing. We still have 20 minutes to go, though, so anything can happen. But one thing's for sure, it's as quiet as a mouse peeing on cotton in this building. Birmingham five, Evansville two. At the end of two periods of play, Jody Chernesky here will be back in about 15 minutes, getting set for the third period of action. You're listening to Birmingham Bulls Hockey.
Okay, Jody Chernesky back here at the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana, just across the street from the Ohio River in Kentucky. Um, been an interesting night, and uh, I knew coming into tonight that I would have no clue what type of officiating we would have because, quite honestly, I've never, uh, I've never done a game officiated at this point uh, with – Mitchell Perry as the, the head referee. Well, you live and you learn and things have happened. I'm going to try and go back over some things. It took me a little over 10 minutes to get to the bottom of this, and I've been told that some of the, uh, the scoring that is listed on the website, uh, whether it be from penalties called or goals and assists, some of those are going to be changed. Uh, I ask which ones were in question, which ones maybe needed to go back and take a second look at for assists or maybe a tip in front. Nobody seems to know, which at that point I decided, okay, I give up. I'm not going to ask anymore. I'll just tell you what I know. How's that? This all started with, in my opinion, Nikita Kozarev being um, given a penalty, five-minute major, for butt ending the stick and into the gut, the ribs, if you will, of Jordan Spadafore. Well, if you have Flow Sports, Hockey TV, whatever you want to call it, you can go back and look at it. They had the replay set up for you. You'll be able to see that <laughs> it just didn't happen. Uh, Jordan Spadafore at the end of the play with a, you know, this dead, there was no, it was in between play. It was a dead whistle. No action was going on. He just skated past. Nikita Kozarev, he's got about a foot difference in height on Nikita. He just skated past him, and he ran into Nikita's arm. You couldn't even see Jordan Spadafore's jersey move, much much less be able to see how a player like Nikita Kozarev could butt in the stick of somebody. If you can envision it, it's like taking a broom. You're sweeping up the kitchen floor, and that top end of the broom taking it and giving it to somebody in the gut, right up, right with that butt end of the stick. Um, at the very least, he just spatted for that. He skated right in to Nikita Kozarev, and it barely even touched him. Nonetheless, the penalty was called, and a doozy at that. Five minutes for butting the stick, and another five minutes for a game misconduct. Misconduct, that is, on Kozarev. Well, fast forward after... Uh, some more rough and tough play in the second period where really things begin, he began to lose control of it in that second period. Towards the end of that second period of play, uh, Spadafore gets called for numerous penalties. Now, at 1447 of the second period, Nick Fia was called for roughing, and a 10-minute mis misconduct for continuing the altercation. In other words, he didn't stop when he was told to. At the same time, Jacob Camps of Evansville was given two minutes for roughing, and the same as Nick Fia, two minutes for continuing the altercation. But at this same time, Jordan Spadafore was given a 10-minute misconduct and a match penalty for cross-checking. He was also given a two-minute minor for slashing, hence the seven-minute power play. That all to, to get to the point where now we're about to head to the third period, hopefully to get through this as quickly as possible and as pain-free as possible because this has been, quite honestly, it's been enough. I mean, <clears throat> you, you just can't describe, you just cannot put into words the calls that were made and, and how they were made and when they were made and who they were made with. But, um, you know, I, I'm being kind when I say there's been a few missed calls tonight. Uh, I'm being kind, unlike what normally would happen when I would go crazy and go off on the officials. And probably the reason why I'm not is because he's called it both ways. There's been misconducts called on Birmingham and on Evansville. Whether I agree with them or not, it's irrelevant. All I can tell you is Birmingham is up 5-2. to two And uh, 20 minutes of action to go. We get through this period unscathed, uninjured, and without suspension. It'll be a win. 
then we can head towards thinking about the playoffs because nothing will matter after this game tonight. Tomorrow night will be an irrelevant game. Of course, it's competition. You want to win every time you lace the skates up. And it'll be a chance maybe for a few of the players that did not get to see action tonight to show the coaching staff what they can do. But nonetheless, we've got 20 more minutes of action here tonight with a three-goal lead. And for the moment, five-on-five five hockey. Okay. I hope that at least explains some of it. I, I really do apologize for not having a better explanation. But there's absolutely no lines of communication set up for where we are in this press box and what's happening at ice level with the off-ice officials. There's just none. So we'll do the best we can. We'll keep you updated on who scores and, <laughs> and what the score is. And we'll get back to action here as Birmingham gains control of the draw, sends it into the Evansville zone, but it's deflected into the netting and out of play. So a faceoff will come up back at center ice. Around the league tonight, as I said, the only game that really matters to both of these teams, for that matter, is Peoria is at Quad City. And the last I have it, as far as scoring on that is concerned is Quad City is trailing Peoria 2 nothing in, or excuse me, 2-1 to one in the third period of play. Doesn't really matter. What matters is what Birmingham does. Just need a win. That's it. One point to be exact. Now Evansville has the puck behind their own net. Valent has it. He's pressured by Cola Tarsi. He'll set it up far side. Hatton lifts it to center ice, and Evansville gains the Birmingham zone. Knocked away from Hobbs by Masson, and Birmingham has it. As Ryan Romeo sends it cross ice for Clark. Dangerous pass right through the slot. Come on. They're getting lazy. There's a shot save made. Rebound gloved by Hayden Stewart. And this is what I'm talking about. Two passes by the Bulls defense, both of them right in front of Hayden Stewart. Hayden Stewart is, allowed, is talking to Drake Glover now. I'm sure about this. Two separate passes right through the slot. One of it found its way onto the stick of Brendan Harrogate, and Birmingham is lucky to score is five to two. Don't ease up. You've got them down on the ropes. It's five to two. You got a three goal lead. Put your foot on the neck and let's go. Stop being lazy. Let's play hockey. Come on, guys. Off the draw, Birmingham has it in their own zone, loses it as Zhukov takes it away, but a nice play by Glover takes it right back, and he'll send it into the Evansville zone. Behind the net, Yuskevich sets it up for Zhukov. He loses his edge, goes down, loose puck. The referee actually got in the way, still loose in the Evansville zone. McTavish backhands one deep. Birmingham will change lines. We need to finish this team, and we need to finish them quick. Loose puck in the Evansville zone off of an errant stick. It comes free, and Evansville brings it into the Bull zone. Briarly with a nice play intercept. He'll give it to McGregor Sinclair. Sinclair just out of the reach of Walker, and Evansville sends it right back into the Bull zone. Now McGregor Sinclair near faceoff circle takes a shot. Save made right into the bread basket of Cole Cece. And he won't take any chances and put the puck on the ice. He just squeezes it so a face-off in the Evansville zone to his left. A lot of times this season, Birmingham has had opportunities to put teams away. We've had some really good games here. I mean, come on. We've lost only nine games in regulation all year long. We're a very, very good, solid hockey team. We just need to be able to put teams away finally and get it over with instead of allowing them to hang in and hang in and hang in, just get it over with. Puck plate paid behind the goal line. Birmingham has possession in the Evansville zone. That's Wiesner. Centers a pass out in front just past the outstretched stick of Sinclair. Evansville has it ahead for Spence. Spence has it poked away from him by Cola Tarsi. Now it's loose at center ice, and Masson has it. Masson far side for Donahue, who will race in after it behind the net. Donahue has it. Circles just inside that faceoff dot. Donahue still with possession. He goes down. Loose puck sent through the slot. Birmingham has it. There's a shot goes high over the glove or over the blocker that is of CeCe. And back comes Vazjankin. 
He'll backhand one into the bull zone. Clark sets it up for Briarly. Now Cola Taurus, he puts one into center ice, and it looks like Birmingham is just going to be content on getting the puck out of their zone as quickly as possible. It looks like the offensive dogs have been called off. Now Miles Abbott <coughs> had it, lost it. Birmingham sends it right back in to the Evansville zone where Pelot has it. Pelot tried to get it out to Hobbs. Everyone's playing a little slower and a little bit lazier. I don't know what's going on, but both teams seem to be waiting on another one's mistakes maybe. Now it's played by Glover for Rose. Rose in front. He tried to set it up for McTavish. He couldn't get a stick on the puck. Now the puck along the far boards played behind the net for Glover. Adams on him. He'll give it to Rose. Puck kept in by Birmingham. There's a shot taken, save made by Cole Cece, and he drives it for his defense who will clear the zone. Vance has it now. For Sinclair, Banks went off the boards, but we couldn't get it into the Evansville zone, played by Abbott. And he lifts one into the Bulls bench, so a faceoff will come up there at center ice. 16-17 to go here in the third period of play. Birmingham 5, Evansville 2. Maybe I was a little premature over the last three or four months saying this is the last team I wanted to play in the playoffs. I still believe that because I believe we match up better with Pensacola as far as the playoff series goes than Evansville, but something looks off tonight for both teams, more so Evansville than Birmingham, though. Now Valente sends one into the far corner off the glass, played by Clark around the boards. Walker with a nice play sends it out. Taken there by Sinclair. He has Wiesner with him, and the whistle blows. They'll call this on an offside as El Rue Wiesner was in ahead of the play. People beginning to already file out of the building, and the ones that are here, very, very reverent, church-like. Still waiting on the drop of the puck. The linesman does not look like, he doesn't like how they're lined up, so he'll try and separate them and try it again. Sinclair along with Zhukov still waiting on the drop of the puck. Come on, let's go. Now Sinclair gives Zhukov a shove. <sighs> Just drop the puck and let's go. You're going to cause more trouble than you're going to keep. Finally, puck is dropped. Now it's loose under the skates of the linesman. Sinclair will pick it up. Sinclair with a shot. Blocker save made by CeCe, and instead of playing it, he just holds on for another faceoff. 15-50 got five to go here in the third period of play. Birmingham five, Evansville two. I'll have to find some place to eat tonight. Last night, Ray Pack and I, I'll have to tell you about this place we went to. It's a German restaurant, and I mean very authentic German. I'll tell you about it in a minute. But back to action. Here comes Spence through center ice. He has Vazjokin with him. Spence loses his footing. Loose puck along that corner along the far boards, picked up by the Bulls, and Wiesner just lifts one in. Birmingham will change lines. Back to play it as Prestia for Evansville. Banks one off the boards for Vazjokin, who sends one in behind the net of Hayden Stewart. Briarly picks it up for Birmingham. Long pass ahead for Colatarsi. He hooks that with him. Prestia takes it away from him. Now Colatarsi takes it right back. Save made. Colatarsi with a great move around Prestia. Just couldn't convert. Now the puck is played along the far boards. Walker backhands one for Colatarsi. Colatarsi with the ability to play up front or back on defense. And he shows just how versatile he can be. Very, very valuable position player, Joey Colatarsi. Puck played in behind the Evansville net. Bezjankin, or excuse me, Escavich, pushed the brakes on, sets it up for Abbott, and Evansville clears the zone. Birmingham clogging up that neutral zone. Vance takes out Hobbs, and Glover plays the puck around the boards, but not out. Played into the corner. Ryan Romeo picks it up first for Vance, and Vance off the stick of McTavish deflected back into the Evansville zone. Brendan Harrogate back to pick it up for Evansville. 
He'll skate through center ice, avoids the hit from Sinclair. That would have been an ugly one. Sinclair did him a favor. Now Romeo has it near corner. Off the skate of Wiesner, back into the Evansville zone. Puck being chased by Walker. He catches up with it first. Centering pass for Sinclair goes behind him. Birmingham's Wiesner can't keep it in. Now it's played back into the Bulls zone. Taylor Briley ahead. Tried to set it up for Walker. It bounces off his stick, and Valent will pick it up for Ebb for Evansville. Near side. Valent gets a hit there from Donahue and Ice when cost the puck up where Clark has it. Banks one off the board into center ice. Played by Birmingham's Walker. <clears throat> now Scotty Curtin takes it away for Evansville. Centering pass through the slot. Back for Curtin. Instead comes back for Prestia. Curtin with a shot save made. Puck bouncing all over the place. No one with a good, accurate shot. But Evansville has the puck alive. Taken away nicely by Zach Masson, who clears the zone. Spence with the puck at center ice. Plays it far side. Dorsey has it. Tries to get around Kola Tarsi. Dorsey all the way around behind the net through the blue line. Cross ice pass. Near set side for you. Scave it's a shot. Nice play by Clark. He blocked it. Never made it through to Stewart. Now puck is played in the near corner. Four players in to tie it up. Now Spence comes in as well. Briarly takes it away from all of them. Taylor Briarly with the puck. Far boards. He just lifts one into center ice. Back into the Evansville zone. Now Spence takes it. He lifts one in off the glove. Glove, that is, by Stewart. He drops it. Normally, he'll hold that one for a faceoff, but no one doing any forechecking whatsoever for Evansville, so he casually just drops it, and here comes Birmingham through center ice. That's Rose with the puck. He'll bring it in. Rose takes the shot. Blocker save made by CeCe, and that's deflected into the stands and out of play with 12, 15 to go here in the third period of play. We'll take a break. Birmingham 5, Evansville 2. You're listening to Birmingham Bulls Hockey. Okay, Jody Chernesky back at the Ford Center here in Evansville, Indiana. We're down to 12.15 to go here in this hockey game. Bulls up by three. I'm not sure if my granddaughter, Charlotte McDaniel, is still up listening to the game tonight, but it's her sixth birthday, and Papa's baby girl is growing up way too fast, and I'm sure everybody out there knows exactly what I'm talking about. She promised me she would stay five years old forever. I guess she couldn't do it. She broke a promise to Papa. Now she's six. I'll be back soon, honey, and Papa will take care of you with his birthday presents. How's that? All right, back to action. Evansville sends the puck deep into the bull zone, intercepted by Vance. Now he has a, a run in with Hatton. Loose puck along the far boards. Hobbs keeps it in for Evansville. High into the air, near far face off circle, almost gloved by Abbott and played, but Birmingham's Vance. Clears the puck around the boards and out. Puck played by Birmingham's Colatarsi for Vance. Birmingham will change lines. Wiesner tips it into the near corner. Behind the net, Yuskevich has it. He'll set it up far side for Brendan Harrogate. Harrogate ahead for Scotty Curtin. Romeo, nice job, ties him up. Now Clark plays it behind his net. Near side, bounce funny off the boards right to Scotty Curtin. Curtin far side for Zhukov. Zhukov with the puck. Drops it. Shot save made right into the midsection of Stewart. He didn't even see the puck. And then it fluttered to the ice in front of him. Traffic in front of Hayden Stewart. Almost gave up a big fat rebound. Evansville Zhukov with the puck. Pressured by McTavish. Tries to spin away. Ken. He finally get it away, and back comes Evansville through center ice. Scotty Curtin 
Couldn't set it up for Harrogate. Br Taylor Briley backhands one near side. And Glover plays it for McTavish. Rose, a nice pin, fast away, backhander, save Briley. Rose with an incredible touch pass behind the back. Really no sense of urgency there for Briley. He tried to move from forehand to backhand, but a nice little butterfly save there from Cole Cece kept Briley off the boards in Birmingham, still with a 5-2 lead. In a normal situation, Taylor Briley's off to the races on that, and he's skating as fast and as hard as he could. With a 5-2 lead with 10 and a half to go in the game, maybe he called the dogs off a little bit. Now, Matthews takes the hit from Camps just inside the blue line, and the puck is played behind the Evansville net. Comes around near side, Camps and Matthews fighting for it. Back into the Bulls blue line, Briarley plays it ahead to McTavish, and McTavish costs it up. Now Camps has it, taken away from him by Fia. Loose puck by Spence, picked up. He backhands one off the Bulls bench, and this one could be too many men on the ice. The puck hit one of the Birmingham players that were either leaving the bench or going to the bench. The whistle blew but it looks like no penalty will be called here with 10.15 to go here in the third period of play. Around the league tonight, Fayetteville 5, Pensacola 2. That's a final. Roanoke defeats Knoxville 3 to nothing. That is final as well. Huntsville manhandling Macon, which is really surprising to me. I was so impressed with Macon and how they played against Birmingham last weekend. But Huntsville all over making seven to nothing. And that's in the third period of play. And of course, Quad City three, Peoria two. And that's with 10 minutes to go in that game. Nick Fia passes far side for Vance. Gets past him back into the Evansville zone. Zach Masson hauled down, no call. He tried to set it up in front for Fia, just missed. And here comes Evansville now. Matt Hobbs has it taken away from him by Fia. Ahead for Abbott, who will send it into the bull zone. We're under 10 minutes to go here in the third period of play. Birmingham, five. Evansville, two, two on one play. Here comes Birmingham. Donahue with a shot goes high and wide. Puck comes all the way back to the blue line where Vance has it for Birmingham, and he'll send it right back in. Funny hop off the boards, almost bounced right out in front, but it comes on top of the netting behind the goal. So a whistle blows, we'll have a face-off. Media timeout, 9.27 to go here in the third period of play. Birmingham 5, Evansville 2. You're listening to Birmingham Bulls Hockey. Okay, Jody Chernesky back at the Evansville Arena Ford Center here in Evansville, Indiana. 9.27 to go here in this hockey game. Birmingham trying to mercifully get out of here with a 5-2 win. And I'm not sure Evansville maybe wants this game over with worse than we do. This has been an odd hockey game from the get-go. Now puck loose along the far boards, played by Wiesner. Puck comes free for Prestia, who will skate behind his own net. And Nick banks one off the boards, kept alive by Sinclair for Birmingham. McGregor Sinclair behind the net, centers one for Walker off the mark. Sinclair turns, spin, blocked by Prestia in front. Birmingham will change lines. Zhukov behind his own net, gets one out. Through center ice where Scotty Curtin tries to get around Ryan Romeo. 
And looks like there's going to be a penalty here on Birmingham and Romeo as the puck escapes the zone all the way back down into the Thunderbolts in. Cole Cece will come out. Delayed penalty on Birmingham. Brendan Harrogate with the puck has it knocked away from him by Walker. And this one's going to be on Ryan Romeo. He's going to get probably a high sticking call, which is actually the case. Now the linesman goes down behind the play and right in front of Hayden Stewart. The fans get a kick out of that. But we're going to be on the power play. This one will be for Evansville. 8.27 to go here in the third period of play. This will be Evansville's third power play of the night. They're 0 for 2 thus far. Remember, one of those power plays was for Kozarev getting the call, a major penalty for butt ending of the stick. All right, Birmingham will try and kill the penalty. Face off to the left of Hayden Stewart. In the bull zone. Drake Glover for Birmingham, Matt Hobbs for Evansville. Still waiting on the drop of the puck. Gets back at the point where it's taken. As Scotty Curtin drops it for Spence. Rose loses a stick and a good play there by Glover. Knocks the puck away almost all along shorthanded. But Pilot takes it away from him. Now Rose takes it right back and just ices it all the way off the boards right to Cole Cece. A minute and a half to go here in this power play for Evansville. Eight minutes to go in the third period. Harrogate brings the puck in, loses it, and Joey Kulatarski takes it, and he'll send one down the ice. I mean, these the skaters that are out there on the ice right now are just, they're not even skating hard. They're just going through the motions. Hobbs drops it back for Curtin down low. Off the board just played. McTavish will catch up with it first. Spence comes out with it to Hobbs. Back at the point. Now Hobbs plays it down low for Spence. Harrogate has it, or Harrogate's here near side. Valent fans on the shot, and it's easily cleared by McTavish down the ice. I would love to know what is said in the locker room, especially Evansville's locker room after this game is over with. I just have seen very little, if any, effort whatsoever in this period. Puck bounces off the boards straight to Masson, who just easily chips it out of the zone. We're down to 30 seconds to go on the power play for Evansville. As Romeo was in the box for high sticking and Sinclair easily just picks a loose puck up. No interference at all from any Evansville player, and he just sends it down the ice. They'll try it again. Now Dorsey has the puck taken away from him by Matt Clark who once again sends it down the ice. There is just, this game is over with in the minds of Evansville. They have just, they've just mailed this one in the last few minutes. This is done. Puck intercepted by Nick Fia. Fia happy just to bring it back into the Evansville zone. We're down to three seconds. That's it. We're back at full and even strength. Birmingham has killed the penalty, and we're back at five-on-five five hockey. Cola Tarsi drops it for Vance. Return for Joey Colatarzi. Banks went off of Fia. Colatarzi goes down. He was hit by Hobbs. And Camps will bring it into the bull zone. He's played by Donahue. And the puck is sent down behind Netminder Cole Cece. And icing is called on the Birmingham Bulls. So a faceoff comes right back down to the left of goaltender Hayden Stewart with 5.50 to go here in the third period of play. This will be to the right of Hayden Stewart. I apologize. Zhukov will be on the draw for Evansville. Walker for Birmingham. Controlled by Walker. He gives it to Briley and Carson Vance. Loses it to Scotty Curtin. Played along that far corner. Puck squirts free behind the net. Gets past Taylor Briley to Fia. Fia can't clear. Pilot keeps it in. Taken away by Fia, and here comes Birmingham, three on two if they hurry. Nick Fia with the puck. Curls through the slot, drops it for Donahue, a shot blocked in front by Prestia. Birmingham keeps it alive, though. Briarly 
tried to set it up for Donahue. It's taken away from him, and here comes Evansville. Scotty Curtin just tips it in deep, and they'll come off for a line change. They have absolutely no interest in scoring, no interest whatsoever in putting pressure on. Now McTavish sends one in behind the net. McTavish takes it away from Valent. Puck comes free near side. Matthews is there along with Vesjankin, and it comes free. Here comes Juskevich. Juskevich with a shot just to the left of the skate of Stewart. Goes wide. Now loose puck is picked up. Spence takes the shot. That's deflected by McTavish out of play. So a faceoff will be in the bull zone with 4.45 remaining here in this hockey game. Mercifully, hopefully ending in 4.45. Now Romeo kind of favoring that left leg. He took the shot. It was deflected out of the, out of play. Not really putting a lot of pressure on that left leg. Ryan Romeo kind of stretching it out. Hayden Stewart was the first one to him to basically ask him if he was okay. Romeo onto the bench. He'll sit down and wait out the next shift. Okay. Let's see what happens the last 4.45. Let's see if both teams just have decided it's enough. Let's go home. Or if somebody wants to send a message for tomorrow night's game. Remember, not only do they play tomorrow night, but more than likely, we're going to be playing this same hockey team in the playoffs. And that's at the very least two more hockey games aside from tomorrow night. Romeo is in some distress as I'm looking. He's sitting behind that blue line, that blue stripe along the bench. Slamming a stick down. I never see Romeo upset like I've seen him now. But you know that had to really, really get to him if he's in that much distress. Puck drop finally played behind that goal line. Birmingham picks it up. Carson Vance banks one off the boards. Back into the Evansville zone. McTavish giving chase along with Valent. Still loose. Valent touches up. No icing. Puck is played by the Bulls. McTavish. Around the boards, far side for Carson Vance. For McTavish, return to Vance. He'll play it behind the net. Loosen this corner. You can actually hear the players talking on the ice that's so quiet in this building. I'm not exaggerating. Now Masson has it, far boards. He'll play it behind the net. Yuskevich drops it off or Spence takes it for Evansville. Grant Spence now tries to get away from Mass, but he can't, so he just backhands one right in on Stewart, who will steer it aside. Taylor Briarly ahead for Nick Fia. Banks went off the boards. Can't get it past the defense of Evans for Donahue, so Birmingham will have to regroup. Now Donahue taps one through center ice, back to get it. With Evans will have it. He loses it, and Birmingham finally, Fia, tips one deep into the Evansville zone. Three and a half to go, third period, Birmingham five, Evansville two. Now as Walker has tried to dance around the defense, couldn't do it, and back comes Matthew Hobbs for Evansville. He gets away from one man in front, score! What a play by Matthew Hobbs. He gets around the defense. I believe that was Walker far side and made a nice feed in front. Abbott was there all alone. Hayden Stewart could do absolutely nothing about that. He was all alone and just had an open net to shoot at. And now, 5-2 lead becomes what I think is the most dangerous lead in hockey, a two-goal lead. It's now 5-3, still in favor of the Bulls, and not a lot of effort coming from Evansville. But that one goal can sometimes change things. I know this. Birmingham is going to be looking at an open net sooner or later. They'll pull Cole Cece. Birmingham needs to convert if that happens. We need to keep Evansville off the board again. No more goals. That's enough. Back to action. Evansville Zhukov skate through center ice. Gets past Kula Tarsi and dumps it in deep. Played by Vance around the boards, but not out. Finally, Birmingham lifts one in the center ice. Rose is there but it's taken away from him by Prestia. And he'll send it in behind Stewart. Now Vance comes in along with Scotty Curtin. Kola Tarsi there as well for Birmingham. 
Curtain comes out in front. Nice play. Harrogate was there. Stewart slams the door shut. Harrogate was wide open. Let's go, guys. This game's not over with. Played behind the net. Stewart lets it go. Donahue chips it back to center ice. Two and a half to go here in the third period. Net is empty as Cole Cece has been pulled. Six skaters now for Evansville. Cola Tarsi gets it ahead for Fia. Fia can't get it out of the zone. Spence keeps it alive. Played along the near boards. Fia loses it in front. Curtin was there. He couldn't get the shot off. Now Hatton has it far boards. Hatton curls away from Donahue. He's in front. Harrigan with a shot. Save rebound. Loose. Still loose. Hayden Stewart reaches behind him and keeps it out of the net. Puts that left mid over it and covers up for a faceoff. Holy cow. All of a sudden, Evansville has decided they're going to play hockey. For 18 minutes, it looked as they had no interest, no desire whatsoever to do anything but go home. That goal that made it 5-3 ignited them. They pulled their goaltender. Now it looks as if the ice is tilted. And Birmingham, as I said before, has had a problem not putting teams away when they could, and they did have an opportunity to. Birmingham now up by two. And every opportunity the first 18 minutes of this second or this third period has went by the wayside. A couple of times we've had odd man rushes. One time we had Taylor Briarly in alone. I mean, we got to put these players away. We, we've got to put these teams away when we have the opportunity to. It's happened this way all year long. It's not that we give up the goals in the comeback. It's just we just, for some reason, just can't seem to finish. I'm over-exaggerating. I know I am. We're the best team in this league. But we got to finish. Games aren't over with until they're over with. You follow me? 152 to go here in the third period. Bulls out shooting Evansville 31 to 19 and up by two, five to three. Net is empty to my right. Cole CC for Evansville on the bench in favor of a sixth attacker. On the draw for Birmingham is McTavish. Hobbs for Evansville one by Birmingham, but Spence takes the puck away, centering pass, gets past Curtin. He was alone, and it just got past him. Now Yuskevich has it in his own zone, has Harrogate back. Yuskevich goes down, Harrogate, though, with the puck, gives it ahead to Curtin for Spence. Back to Curtin along the near boards, played behind the net. Birmingham will try and get it out, and they do. Back into center ice. We're down to a minute and a half to go here in the third period. Birmingham up by two. Grant Spence will skate through center ice. Tries to get it in deep, does. Here comes Scotty Curtin off the post. Off the inside of the post. Curtin was alone, but it just didn't trickle in. Now the puck is sent all the way down the ice. How close was that? Now it's center ice. Hobbs tips it ahead for his vast Jonkin. Just inside the Bulls blue line. McGregor Sinclair takes it away and puts it deep. And two, the Evansville zone, Mathen forechecking, trying to take it away from Prestia. We're down to 45 seconds to go in this hockey game. Bulls up by two. Cola Tarsi with the puck in his own zone, sends it to Briarly ahead for Rose, who just tips it into the zone deep. 30 seconds to go now. Here comes Evansville, another rush. Prestia has it taken away from him by Glover. His shot deflected by Scotty Curtin. As Glover was aiming for that empty net, Curtin deflected it into the stands and out of play with 25.3 seconds remaining in this hockey game. Bulls, looks like they have finished this one off. Timeouts have already been taken. Evansville has none remaining, and they trail by two with 25.3 seconds remaining on the clock. In all the years that I've been watching Birmingham Bulls hockey, not once, has Birmingham ever finished first in anything? If I'm not mistaken, now I know I was not here for the first four years of SBHL hockey, but Birmingham has never won a regular season championship. Donnie, you tries to walk out in front, still loose, covered up by Cole Cece. 
If Birmingham can get away and get out of here with a win with 18.9 seconds remaining on this clock, it'll be the first time that Birmingham has had and won a regular season championship. Puck drop, Rose with a shot, goes past CeCe, who's back in the net as that faceoff was in the Evansville zone. We're down to 10 seconds to go, and this is going to do it. Buskevich sets it up far side. Back comes Adams. He'll just tip it into the zone, and that's going to do it. Three seconds, two, one. And this game is over with the Birmingham Bulls. Through thick and thin has somehow pulled this one out. And for the first time ever, our regular season champions, first place in the SPHL, which simply means this. As long as we're in the playoffs, we'll have home ice advantage this year. <laughs> Other than that, it doesn't mean a lot, but that's good enough for me. That's a start. That's the beginning. What this means is next Wednesday night in Pelham, Birmingham and Evansville will play in the first round of the playoffs, and I guarantee you this. The team you saw tonight on the ice, really both teams, you saw on the ice tonight will not be who you see on Wednesday. It will be a completely different hockey game, a completely different set of hockey teams. Motives will be in place. Desire will be there, whereas tonight, not so much. I promise you, next Wednesday night, it's going to be the start of a war. And it's just going to take two wins, but we still have to beat this team twice. And that's not going to be easy to do. We still have another game to go. That's tomorrow night, same place, same time. I don't know how that's going to turn out. I do know this. Tomorrow night's game is meaningless. Win or lose, it does nothing for you. It does not improve your lot in the playoffs. It does not improve your chances. It does not give you anything extra. All it does is gives you a win or a loss. We see it all the time in the NFL and, and so forth where coaches rest their players in games that have no meaning. They rest their players and get them ready for the playoffs. We see it in bowl games, too, where people won't even play. They'll just wait. I, I don't know what Coach Simchuk and Coach Kerr are going to do, but I do know this. I don't really care what happens tomorrow night. I care what happens next Wednesday night and beyond. So let's do what we have to do. Let's get ready and let's get this done. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Final score from the Ford Center here in Evansville, Indiana. Birmingham 5, Evansville 3. The Birmingham Bulls are regular season champions of the Southern Professional Hockey League. The Birmingham Bulls are regular season champions. Never before I've been able to say that. I can tonight and it feels great. Okay, that's going to do it. Greg, Drevity, Pat Johnson, Joe Stroud, I wish you guys were here. I feel kind of lonely saying that, and I'm the only one here in the building, at least up here in the press box, that are happy about it. But either way, Birmingham 5, Evansville 3. Until tomorrow night, Jody Cherneski here. We'll talk to you guys later tomorrow. Hopefully, the same result. Thanks for joining us, everyone.